A very good morning to one and all present here. This is Bhavya KB, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Bangalore Institute of Technology. On this occasion, I would like to extend a very warm welcome to all the participants for the fifth day of FDP on BLSI Design, Technology and Architecture for Biomedical Applications. Now, I would like to introduce Today's speaker, Professor Shashidara HR, Associate Professor, NIE, Mysore. Firstly, I welcome you to the session, sir. Uh, thank you, madam. Dr. Shashidara HR, sir, he has completed his BE in Electronics and Communication in the year. 2001 from Mangalore University. He has completed his MTech in 2008 in VLSI Design and Embedded System from VTU, Belagavi. He has been awarded PhD in the year 2018 on on-chip design and verification methodology for multimodal biomedic biometric application from Dayanand Sagar College of Engineering, VTU, and a VTU, Belagavi. He has total 14 years of teaching experience and six years of R&D experience. He has been awarded for the best paper from various agencies like ICA, CNI in the year 2018, ICSIP in the year 2014, and ICMEET 2K12 in the year 2012. So his field of expertise and interest is in MEM computing design and implementation, multi-core architecture design and network on chip, BLSI verification techniques, on chip design and verification, RTL and TLM architecture design and image processing. He is a senior member of IEEE and member of Cash Society, life member of IET member of BLSI Society of India. So coming to his publication, he has two books published. He has published five book chapters. He has published 15 papers published in international journals and 32 papers published in uh, uh, international conference and four papers published in national conference. He has been the reviewer of IEEE transaction on signal processing, IEEE system journals, Springer Journal, Multimedia Tools and Application, Springer Journal, SN Computer Science, Springer Journal, Personal and uh, Computing, World Scientific Publishing Journal of Circuit System and Computers since 2017, IGI Go Global Publishing, International Jour Journal for uh, Embedded and Real-Time Communication System since 2016. He has Australian Patent agent, uh, Agency Patent, and uh, he has done a uh, funded project. So uh, on the title, Center of Excellence in Renewable Energy Sources, Battery Management Systems and IoT. So for a duration of five years and uh, uh, an amount sanctioned of 95 lakhs. And he has uh, done one more funded project on health monitoring of premature infants through a EEG signals on FPGA implementation. So the funding agency is NIECRD uh, for a duration of one year and uh, it has already been completed. Whereas the first one, it is on, on ongoing uh, project. So uh, this is the brief uh, uh, introduction about uh, Professor Dr. Shashidara HR sir. Uh, Dr. Shashidara HR sir, I warmly welcome you to the today's session.
Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, so once again, I welcome all of you for the morning session on the topic neuromorphic computing. So, over to you, sir. Thank you, madam. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, let me share my screen. Yes, sir. You can share. Yeah. Is it visible? Yes, sir. It's visible. Uh, first of all, I will thank you, BIT, Bangalore Institute of Technology, for giving me this opportunity to deliver my knowledge on neuromorphic computing. As we have started to working from 2018 on this field, and we are moving on to deliver some of the things neuromorphic computing techniques. I thank the Zelaja madam personally inviting me to deliver a talk on neuromorphic computing. Thank you, madam. Yeah. Uh, we are all know we have so many computing techniques. We are come across with an, a, a superscalar from Van Uman to an a superscalar and then VLIW architecture, etc., etc., etc. Uh, going to an high performance computing architecture, looking at uh, how the speed will be uh, maintained by the computing systems. So, somewhere else, we missed the data maintenance as today's world will look for more and more data to be processed. So, on those aspects, to make it the high performance computing to, oh, oh, to take up the more data to be processed with an, a less uh, delay parameter. So we are going to look at on uh, the neuromorphic computing at one level. So that is the deliverability which goes to make out the another one field to be evolved as an a edge computing sector. So we have an, a, so many uh, computing systems which is evolved at an, a high performance computing techniques like an ubiquitous computing, edge computing, etc., etc., etc. So ubiquitous, ubiquitous computing will be within the networks how you can uh, make out the computing system to be available. So the edge computing will be delivers so every node of your communication, every cloud node of your communication to be delivered so very effectively. So as we are looking at on, all data will be moving on to a cloud or looking at and uh, uh, storing it and somewhere else. So we looks for these type of computing in future. Maybe already goes on implementing it. So maybe in future be more dependent on so these type of computing systems. So as the technology is evolving more and more on these computing techniques, so we are making out more and more advancing. We are thinking all uh, uh, high tech to be high technology to be present in my uh, surroundings and making it available. So not only for our usability, also for our health systems. So with respect to that, so we think that, so there should be something should be evolved because the yesterday's technology is absolute, today's technology is present, tomorrow we are thinking to be evolved with an, a more technological preferences. So that may be an, a very good parameters for the changes which is occurring from day to day and mainly depends on more and more data. Yesterday's data may be absolute, today's data may be current and tomorrow's data may be and huge. So we need to go on taking up all these data to be processed at a better uh, computing system. So we all look at an, at an application side, at an API side, so how the data will be presented. But so once you go on looking at how my system should have to handle this data somewhere else, so we miss those factors to be present. So why this data should be there? To make our life so much easier and we make such, make such that so, so much innovation should have to be done on taking up all my work as an easier. So today we're looking at, so and a robot will do so many works. 
So how that robot will be do? So how it will be learns the previous understanding of mind and today how it will be presented. So all those things will be coming to an picture to say so the edge computing. So or to to get on the high performance computing for today's world. So it the outset the edge computing maybe looks uh, very familiar to us. So but not to much more aspect how it can be deliberated said the another end. So that's why we look at and how you can go on reflect what you need to be doing or what it should have to be done or how it can be taken to do your work. So that is the major factor. So that's why. So we look set on more on how a deliverable should be there from one parameter to the another parameter or taking different data values and make it available as an useful information at an, a, another end. So that's why so we'll go with an n number of inputs. So all are huge data amounts, maybe at an one at an IoT side, another one at an a, uh, financial or the some security data values, another one as an a social data parameters. So all these, I'm taking three example. We have an N number of data can be presented over here. All data should be streamed it on a single channel so, so that it can be available at an useful information. So to do this aggregation of all data to be presented at a single channel at sequential order, in a sequential order, so and make it that stream of data more analytically available as an useful information. Maybe let us say, so I am more interested in the uh, data which is observed or which is sensed at an environmental values or at an uh, health values. So that data, so then all the data are streamed here. So I will collect only those analytics of the data which is needs to be taken as an useful information for us. So and somebody else so may look at on the securitized data. So, and somebody else will look at on uh, <clears throat> the social uh, media data. So, all those things needs to be an useful information with respect to them. So, we need to make that analysis by learning what I want and processed at an, a, a single end from streaming or from taking from an, a different source values. So, what it will be like looks to make us. So as you are making out more data values at this end, so you need to create so many delays to make it sequential order. Or say once you make it a sequential order, so all the data will have major problem calling it as a low latency. How to come across with the low latency or how you can go with an, those factors. So that is with respect to your resource, how much you are utilizing it. So with respect to that, so we can say we need to have an a low latency, or sorry, we will have an a low latency. So that will be needs to explain the efficient resource utilization at another one. End. So if you make out an a aggregation between this latency to an utilization, so we'll create more pressure. So on the system, so how you can consider these two factors at the one end. So that's why we'll come across with an to clear this, we come across with an a computing system, calling it as an approximate computing system, or which will be the presented one, how it can be taken out. So what is mean by then ap approximate computing? So we have an a many applications. So we need to segregate all the many applications. So with respect to a single data usages or an a useful data values. So that's why we need to approximate all my output, which is good enough to be deliverable at an a user end. So that's why. So we'll take an a, 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 a better data proportions, which is useful to present at one end of the application or at an a application where the data will be looks more on those factor values. So this is one example. So how the taxi heat map will be considered. Uh, for uh, the approximation values. We have n number of values or m number of data. So each one will be saying the different heat values or heat parameters or different temperatures across the 
uh, regions which is selected. So, but what is the end which you need to be considered at a single temperature values or single heat map values? So there is we call it as a live taxi heat map parameter. So we there approximate this value as a single end and present it for that values. The approximation maybe tells us how good or how bad so your uh, mapping will be done for all these approximation values. So how to do this at a computing end? So all the data which is streamed here will be collected at a single end, maybe in a different values of data. So maybe at an approximated at a single values at this end. So you can have a threshold for that. So one at a higher value and another one at a lower value and make it available. So make it as an, a one uh, value at a higher level on approximation, lower level on, on approximation. This is a simple example how you can look at a, a many more data, more many more different data values. So how it can make out an approximate computing systems. What is the idea here? So the major idea is to achieve item subset of the data items instead of the entire data sets what you are considering it so maybe looks at an uh, maybe taken at an a, a, a lower end and uh, looks the data at an a, a, at an a, a, a dis more distributed manner once you go to an, a higher abstraction level so you would look at an the data will be on a very small or very a, very combinational values so, but so once you go for a computing, how you can take these two values, these two data items. So, and once you are considering that a higher abstraction level to a lower abstraction level. So, what is the total approximation or total uh, latency you are creating, or total latency which is making uh, to reduce over there? So, that itself the major idea to come across with an approximate computing the values. Let us take an a huge data set. So we'll do an a sampling, simple sampling, so which is an approximate computing. We'll approximate all the data values to be appearable at an, a single set of data. So maybe at a lower abstraction level and a higher abstraction level data. So come also to then a single data set, so which is either neither to an, a higher abstraction level nor at an, a lower abstraction level, so which is presented at a single end. So, which is made analysis to give an a approximate output. So, that analysis says that. So, what is the exact or it, what is the approximate values to be presented? Let us say I have a two value, ten and an one. So, I will approximate it to an a, a, a eleven by two. So, which is goes around uh, five point five or five point one values. So, where five approximated it in a five values. So there which will be says us there should be an a, a, a approximate which is bounded with an error that may be an a plus or minus error to say the appearance data parameters. So <clears throat> this uh, total appearance from an huge data sets to an approximate values from an a, and is computing approximate computing to be analyzable. So we'll take an a simple state of the art of the systems where we have an n number of data streams S1 to an Sn, so which is aggregated as a single data stream at the at that value. Maybe you are using any of the uh, your uh, data techniques to be make it available. So, and then we'll make an approximation, stream approximation, which is derived as an approximate output. So, which is derivable at n plus or minus error bound values. So, that is a normal cloud data center, which will be doing it. So, normally how it can be taken care. So, which is having normally cloud data center will have two major appearance of your data. One is an aggregator. The second one is an approximator. So, this total value needs to be considered for these approximate output values, so which is bounded with the less values of error boundness that may be an plus and a minus values. What are the limitations here? So as you are making out an a data stream, there is huge data will be that. So that is converted into an, a single data stream through your aggregator. So subject to your utilizing 
more number of bandwidth toward that so, so that it is goes on wasting your bandwidth values second one so as you are utilizing in cloud data center or the resources so which needs to be calculated at each and every end of this data presence data approximation so, so that it will goes on utilizes only uh, utilizes the cloud center data so huge amount of cloud center uh, data center resources values so what is needs to be thought here so to overcome from these two limitations so one is the bandwidth wastages second one is the resource huge resource utilization so we process we allows the data to be processed at the edge node before it sent to the cloud such so, so that what value of data needs to be taken care for the x uh, number of users so that will only be presented at an cloud so to do these values so we'll make out an a computing analysis to do this processment so that itself we are denoting it as an edge count. Let us look at and how it will be made. So we have a huge number of source of data. So maybe n number of, so where and all you can collect the data. That source of data will be processed locally through your gateways, through your appearable uh, routers. So that gateways or local processing unit itself will be denoted as an edge node. So that edge node will be segregate your data. What is useful? Only those data will be collected. Let us say I am collecting only the home automation data. So only those data will be processed here and make it available to the cloud. So for future use, let us say so another one. I want an a only and my usage of the data at the electricity values. So only those data will be processed here and presented at a cloud value so that I will have more segregated data values collected from the different sources and processed and presented over there. And you can have a combination also, not only one data to be processed. So you can collect all the home automation data at a single site and collect only which one is useful among them, maybe combinationally or maybe uh, concurrently or maybe independently. So that only will be processed here and presented to your cloud. Presented to your cloud. So only those data will be stored over there. So that so what is the major drawback here? So a major advantage here. So you are not taking up all the data to be presented so at your channel, so that your go bandwidth goes on reduces. So second one. So your resource utilization at this cloud center so will also will be less because your data presented it to the cloud itself will be less so that so your data so uh, the utilizations will also be reduced over there so there is a more opportunities at this end to create that so we have so many n number of uh, parameters to take up this so what is the major opportunity here is so we need to provide more computing resources more and more computing resources needs to be there so that we can process it so very effectively and presented at this cloud end. So the second one is so we are going on saving the bandwidth values, bandwidth values. So how we can define this so we are using a load as a to process some data hello sir yes. the voice yes. is not audible no sir, it's it's too low sir Let me check it out with
now it's clear madam yes yes sir yeah thank you thank you uh, in short so we can say that so we have two major problems which needs to be addressed So keeping these two parameters in a house to deliver an a better low latency network to process and return data at a faster rate which is requested by an sender. So that may be an a, more than the requests of an sender so requested by the sender. So we are going on processing those data values. So normally some people will say that the cloud technology itself will be the edge computing uh, system. It may be or may not be. So which, with respect to how you look at on uh, the computing systems with respect to that, so we can uh, make out the segregation on these two factors between the cloud and, an, and a cloud processing and an edge processing parameter. So the major key difference as uh, we are looking at a system is an a, a the edge computing is a local processing unit so users will have an a direct access to your data or your sources of a data and processed over there and control will have to segregate or to select your data or to make it available your data so so that the, the edge computing is more on data side and while on the cloud computing user needs to send the request so for that request the at the processing end we need to give an authentication co connectivity so and we will make it available uh, with an all other cloud servers so to work at an, another place so that it will become an indirect access to the system or to the data from the cloud company that is a major difference how it can be made out so but at the single end we can say that so the direct access by the edge computing will make it available to the cloud processing or cloud computing so that both will be combinationally works and make it your data to be available at an cloud data centers so the differences of accessing or the latency between the cloud computing and an edge computing may be at around an a less number of measured milliseconds or maybe a lower millisecond values. So, but as you are looking for more and more data to be processed at an a day or at an a goes on with an a time periods. So you are becomes you look at on more speed to be available to do or to do the processment from the local edge values to our local edge node processing values to the cloud uh, data center or cloud processing values. So that's why so we make out more on edge computing as an a local data processing unit. So where it will takes the lower data and make it available to your centers, cloud data centers. So that is the major end which, which will be looked at on also. So what are all the examples we can look at on? So we have n number of examples to give out here. So as the, this FDP delivers only on, or looks more on the VLSI and technology to be an a biomedical applications. So we look to find the edge computation in the hospital system. Let us say, so a remote patient monitoring system uh, which collects uh, through an IoT which collects so all patient data. So and process there at a local end. So and what all the parameter which crossovers that patient values, only those data will be collected and to be made it available at a data centers. From the data centers, the doctors can access that and measure it, so what all he want and suggest the uh, particular treatment methods to 
that remove patients. That is the one method which can be delivered normally in IoT patient monitoring systems. So through that, so through an uh, edge computing systems. So you may realize so many things, or you may not be realize so many things yet. But the technology has goes on with our lives. So, so many edge computing examples will be there in a daily life. So nowadays we come across then electric vehicles. That is the one best examples where edge nodes will be delivered. So all the edge nodes, so there it each uh, vehicle end and processed all the vehicle uh, health system, vehicle tracking system, anti-theft systems, etc., 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 and processed and made it available to the probe. That is the one techniques which will be goes for that. The second one is, is goes with an electricity smart gate which controls the flow and directions of each. So nowadays we are going for, we are thinking on wireless electricity distribution, transmission and distribution may be uh, thinking at a different uh, hazard end, may, may not be thinking at a different hazard end, thinking at an, a small electricity smart grid which makes this wireless electric uh, supply uh, to be transmitted and distributed. So at that time, the processment of the data will be there. So that will be done at an edge node and make it available to our uh, clothes. So low latency networks, which goes on supporting, uh, tells the nurse stations where, whenever there is a call. So that's what the hospital system, so it should be made it available. So every time the tracking will be there with respect to that, we can make it alarm of that uh, thing that, that it will be inform uh, edge node or, or other edge nodes to be deliverable over. So the one example, major example, so which is uh, the edge computing will be looks for uh, majorly is an, a smart home appliances. So you are using low latency computations near the request. Uh, and you can have a control over so many home appliances using only one device. So, which is connected then to the edge computing allows them to work on the request more and more faster values. So, the another example as I am given to an autonomous cars, cloud gaming and autonomous car. The cloud gaming uh, means uh, you are majorly looks at on a cloud computing, take the data values from there and make it available uh, for the user experience. Of, to do uh, our gaming experience to the users so that they will have real time appearances. Now we are combining with virtual reality, uh, cognitive technology, all those things to this uh, cloud gaming and make it more realistic gaming appearance so on the platform. So that is another one where the edge nodes are more preferably looks set on the more local data processing parameters. So as I told the autonomous car, so that is another one area where we look for more and more uh, application to be deliverable on those uh, factors. So what, how it, this edge computing to be implementable or how it can be taken furthermore inside to that to make an processment to be available. So the one area where the edge will be looks for is an neuromorphic systems. So where you will make the artificial insulin to be enabled as an a more service, pervasive services uh, to be presented to your computational systems and make it appearable to the customer expectations, what they want and how it can be considered. So that's why we make out our, uh, we look set on, uh, the more and more neural networks, AI and ML to be presented at a single end and maybe to be looks at an, a single end and to be presented to the customer expectations. So, so that we learn what we need and what we need to be processed and how it should be processed and how it to be taken to be to the user end or to the user except or to meet the user expectation. So to do this or to make the AI or an ML or an, a, a neural network to be presented to your uh, edge values or edge technologies, we will go majorly with an neuromorphic processors. So our neuromorphic sensors. 
So maybe combinationally we can say, say decide it as an immunomorphic computing systems. So which will fill out all the scattered all the uh, parameters which is needed for your real time intelligence, continuous onboard learning. That is what AML, neural networks, everything at an, a single end and make it available for all your real time data to be sent, to be measured, to be analyzed and to be computed and to be presented at an a user end. So maybe looks for an, a more complex tight bounded values. So but at a network edge, so these are all will needs to be uh, considered at an, a single uh, learning values so our single intelligence values so where the neuromorphic processor and sensor looks on this and make it so this to be available uh, for uh, your appearances so that's going to be a key source of future competitive ad advantage so it's important to understand the potential and start experimenting with uh, neuromorphic uh, parameters here's one example so how your neuromorphic uh, will be looks at on at an a edge values so i have so many edge devices here so many edge devices maybe your health monitoring system maybe your entertainment maybe your normal computing system uh, your uh, transportation maybe autonomous car your security system etc 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 so all this perception of giving different task at all the devices so maybe different different uh, which you have and made it available so taken at a single processing unit so that processing unit itself will be calling it as a neuromorphic processing unit so or generally we call it as a neuromorphic analog processing unit because it will do the analog processing more early and an mm transistors that is your body values so how it will be looks it will be looks as an a computing element normal computing element what we are thinking with an cmr or an other devices which is a enabled devices and make it available to do to to do this task independently on those values so and all this processing unit will have internally do your data to be taken care at a processing end so that will be done through your memory transistors so that is analog memory based on 2d materials maybe at a one end which will be looks these factors so our major interest so for these edge devices how your edge computing will be do so that edge computing is nothing but neuromorphic analog processing unit with an mm transistors arc generally and mem uh, memory in computing systems we'll look at on more on those things in the next where it will be taken care of. so how would you define it neuromorphic computing. so neuromorphic computing systems is generally and mimic the behavior of the neurobiological systems so what is this neurobiological system so how your brain functions similarly we are making a computing system or we are designing a computing system so which do similarly the functions of in a brain so those type of uh, mimicking the behavior will be denoted as an a neuromorphic computing system so normally the neuromorphic computing system will uses an a mem register devices or memory register devices with re retentive characteristics of that so maybe a negative resistance spirit which will be taken to do that so this memory resistor device will make out your major neuromorphic com computing architecture or call it as an a which provides a possible solution to make out the state of the art of the neuromorphic architecture and majorly applicable to many big data artificial intelligence applications so maybe at a different ends which will be looks how it can be taken care so memory registers will make so many advantages uh, which is needs to be there with respect to an, a memory uh, and a computing system combinationally so one is the volatility 
colonization, uh, non volatility, low power consumption, high scalability, and small footprint values. Building this neuromorphic computing system on a memory member register devices are generally called as a mem register based neuromorphic computing system so which will be goes with and to build the neural networks because the major end so which will be segregatively says that here is an ai enabled the ai enabled majorly looks for the neural networks to build this data processing or data uh, handling capability so that's why so we will build a neural network so which is based on a mem register which is termed as an mnn that is a mem register based neural networks so nowadays we come across with so many mnns um, some i think i last uh, we, we look at right on uh, uh, coding techniques communication coding techniques uh, security coding uh, techniques to be presented through an mem register and mem computing forums so, so we did they, they discuss and they presented on mem register based neural networks. so uh, cloud computing or sorry the security uh, systems on an uh, cloud values are in an in, in, uh, iot securities so all those things will be presented through an mem register based neural network. So what is it looks for? It looks for majorly on the behavior, how you dynamically looks for that. So the major analysis of dynamic well behavior is an stability of MNN. So because so you are using a resist resistance to do an a memory a memory as an a memory component. So that needs to be looked at on the stability factor. So that's why so we will make more analysis on the dynamic behavior. So that is as an a stability for MNN. So this is the one simple crossbar array. In a say network register network, <clears throat> which will do an a single or one level of neural system. So this is a pre synaptic neuron. So, which is already derived it. So, to go on with an a post or to take out with an a post synaptic neurons. So, we have an each node values which is connected through an a different crossbars. I think maybe tomorrow Deepthi will be discuss more on this. Uh, will be looks at on how the crossbar synapse will be there and how the synapse can be implemented. And each node is looks at an a one single mem register component which will be acts as an a switch over here to make any communication. It's simple as how if you are look at an in FPGA where the FPGA uh, makes an a switch connectivity between its row and a column uh, or one uh, row to an one column. So similar way. So here also all pre synaptic neuron will be connected to an a post synaptic neuron through these switching components. <coughs> What is the major motivation to look at on this neuromorphic computing systems? So we had a very good Van Neumann architecture, which ruled so many decades of the computing architecture terms by delivering uh, a super computers and which will be makes it available your, for your data processing. So what is the major bottleneck still we look for new Van Neumann architecture? One is a memory wall. So because your Van Neumann architecture is separating uh, or will have the memory component separately and processing unit separately that is will be segregates a computation and a memory to be done and there is a gap which will be created which goes on uh, makes uh, a latency over that or for every computation what you want to do so you need to go to the memory take the data make it available in the computing system right. So that processment, reading, writing the data will make an a memory wall. That is the major gap which is created, which is look, which is not looks more high performance factor. The second one is the limitations of the Moore's law as it goes on explainable to further more uh, one to one or one to many uh, parameters. So as you are having a huge data, is it possible to handle by your Van Neumann architecture? Because you have already an a memory uh, memory wall, you already have an a saturated uh, inclusion of the transistor or the functionality. 
you may go to 6 nanometer you may go to 5 nanometer more and more second effect the secondary effects should be delivered etc 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 so there is a major hungry we have an for an data to be transferred so we that is the deliverable to look at on to see non human architecture the one non type of non human human architecture is an bio inspired neuromorphic computing in each computing system we have an a memory and an a computing elements so or the computing elements itself access an a memory or the memory itself will be access an a computing system so what it will be uses for to do the data analysis technique is an a neural uh, networks so that is the one uh, which is uh, deliverable to the those factors so in one human computing system the computing process will have external memory or as we know that as it separated so a single processor we need to simulate uh, many neurons and the synapses between the neurons so what is the synapse synapse is an a normal memory element so which looks all your uh, neuron computing or neurons to access hello excuse me sir yeah sir your voice is too low sir like most of the participants are chatting like it's very low one second i will check it out then Uh, now it's okay madam yes sir but uh, after you continuing it it is becoming low sir so oh. it is uh, low it is fine to speak little more i think let's uh, yes, it this, okay uh, no problem this flow is fine sir uh, so yeah Make it available from communicating. We have an a major uh, that is major bottlenecks which will be discussed here. So normally these bottlenecks will leads to the energy hungry for data uh, communications. So and when you go for to simulate large number of or large scale of neural networks, these synapses may be available, but these memory wall may not allow all the synapses to be communicated to this neuron virus or this neuron may not be accessible to all the synapses which is presented due to this what memory wall maybe you were saying there may be a bandwidth limitation there may be an uh, some other x y z limitations all those things will become set and single and saying the all these uh, bottlenecks to be make it out to be uh, taken care so these defects will makes the van newman computing system so based on neural networks uh, to be an a power hungrier low density slow speed etc 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 so all those factors will become in performance factors which will be come into picture and says how to be to be there so this grew us to an a novel nano based neuromorphic computing architecture that's what we are going on discussing today and tomorrow on Uh, those uh, factors so what it will be defined sir so computation is an a type of calculations as you know that which includes both your arithmetic operations and a logical operations to be defined to an a well defined uh, architectural model so how well your uh, sequential model or uh, how, how well your computation model uh, will takes up these 
operations or these uh, operational steps to be performed and gives out the result at the respective given time period with a dot with an effective way is itself will be major parameter so where we look set on the concurrent program and a sequential program so and we look set on the sequential program may not be sufficient to speed up uh, parameter as it goes on increasing as you are looking at a high performance from an, an a normal uh, VLI W architecture to an a super scalar architecture. So how it will be speeded up from one to many from 8 bit processor to an a 16 bit 16 bit to an a 32 bit 32 bit to an a 64 bit octa core dual core core to duo etc etc. And so in all those categories so may not be sufficient to goes on speed up uh, sequential programming technique to do your arithmetic and logical operation. So that's why so in to do this we come across with so many computing techniques I think already knows it so how it can be taken care one is in CMOS technology the second one is in spintronics the third one is in a com com quantum computing techniques so there is a three which is majorly looks at on, uh, on this ancient programming side to do the computing let us look at on so or let us compare this so that we will have to discuss the neuromorphic why we are going for neuromorphic so the CMOS will have an low static power consumption and high noise immunity there is a major pros of that so major cons is more power dissipation so as you are including more and more tra transistors or more and more power uh, appearances on that so and you are making out to reduce the channel as you are go on reducing the channels more and more secondary effects should be seen that makes you short channel effects which arises when a smaller CMOS technology. So this is the present technology used to build ALU present in the process 6 nanometer. So below we are thinking below 6 nanometer but it's not giving out to do that also. So maybe somebody looks at on the 4 or 5 nanometer to be deliverable over there to do this ALU operation. So next we come across with an spintronics which is less energy is needed to change spin than a gen to generate a current to maintain electron charges in a device. So every spin we have a nucleus, we have an electrons, outermost electrons and innermost electrons. So both will be revolved so in a different uh, angular directions and each angular direction movement itself will be called as a spin. One spin will generate one energy values, one voltage values or one uh, power values. So Normally, what we look at in normal CMOS or normal uh, field effect devices is an a current. So where the electron charges will be makes a movement from one uh, region to the another region, so and make it available. So, but here in the spintronics, only through the spin you are doing it. So there is no barriers to cross over for an a electrons. So, so that will generating. Uh, more uh, power so we're consuming with an LS energy uses less power as it stated so hard to achieve complete what is the major cons here is so hard to achieve complete spin because you are you are the spinning uh, by itself is very good spinning by force may not be achieved the complete polarization so that you may not achieve what you are expected, the energy what you are expected. Very difficult to maintain the spin polarization for a long time at a room temperature because so every time we can't heat up that and we can't make out the spin. So maybe look at a different end and maintain the spinning at a room temperature value. That is may not be possible. That is very difficult also. Electron speed get distorted due to solid impurities and optical sources. So it was I'm not saying it as a failure. So maybe it is an a major drawback to consume uh, the spintronics for our ALU operation. So that's why we will go across with an a computing uh, quantum computing system. So the quantum computing will goes on execute the task, which is faster when compared to the processors built by Van Neumann architecture. 
so maybe looks at an, another rand logic presents uh, logic presentation so that so it will be looks similar to the van newman architecture or gives out more faster uh, to present the task value so what are the major cons components are costly complexity of practical implementation so the binding of the devices will be very difficult so maybe at an simulation end it's maybe very good but once it needs to be come out with an account of devices maybe looks at an more and more cost investment more and more complexity in the design uh, implementing the design etc etc et so due to this complexity so of practical implementation of a component quantum computing a new technique was developed called as an mem computing technique we are not restricting in a mem computing technique so we are going only with something else x value so we are looking for more combinational of this to be presented so this is the major advantage of a mem computing so than comparing to all these independent technologies so that's why we will come across with an a bio inspired <coughs> neuromorphic computing architecture where we we'll looks for two features one is an in memory computing the second one is an a parallel processing more sequential processing will be converted into an a, a parallel processing so b looks more chances uh, of a mem computing so which may take all your computing architecture for present a computing architecture to an higher uh, level so or it will beats all this architecture and maybe you are saying octa core you are saying dual core you are saying 16 cores 32 cores inside a chip so but so you have major drawback is all the cores need to access your memories inner memories uh, or computing computing memories so that is the major where we look at for that so that's why we will come out with an in memory computing system this is what we we'll look at on so from an van newman architecture so we have a three ends algorithmic implementation low voltage circuits reconfigurable logics so <coughs> reconfigurable logics looks at an integration of the subsystems nano wires graphene devices carbon or graphene devices low voltage circuits goes with an low voltage devices spintronic magnetic so maybe looks at an uh, another one end algorithmic neuromorphic circuits quantum devices then we will look at on uh, bio inspired computing so all the three can be presented over there so this is what neuromorphic accelerators are called as a devices will be looks at or will be can be implemented at all <coughs> levels so normally conventional systems will looks all these things to be done through your instructions doing with an uh, fetching decoding executing and repeating so now here we are segregating that so what initially you want what higher end you want what the abstraction level you looks for it so with respect to that you make out your appearances so normally so at a lower end we will go with more and more graphene devices are going with an integration of sub systems at a middle where so we are looks for the low voltage devices like spintronics so algorithmic level so we looks for bio inspired computation neuromorphic circuits or as an a quantum devices so which may takes up in the future and to be presented at an a, another uh, values so because at these end the li major limitations will be there to do this reconfigurability or reconfigurable the logic but at these algorithmic implementation it's more easy parameters to look at on uh, to be Uh, presented at one end, so that's what we we'll looks for in the future as it makes out more efficiency also for our devices. So what is that? So the philosophical mo motivation is understand thought and a consciousness. Biological majorly on that consciousness we we'll looks for the biological motivation. So we need to understand the brain through engineering how it can be done and how it can be. works for that so with respect to that we need to mimic our uh, computing systems to do those values so what it really takes out an computational motivation 
So maybe and all your real time parameters like animation, speed, sensing, etc. So goes combines with an patterns, all these patterns and make it pos possible to present at a different levels of a networks, neural networks and make it available or processed inside to that and make it available at your cloud value. So that is what the major intention to look for neuromorphic computing. Neuro means neural, morphing means having the shape, form or it looks for um, neuromorphic engineering. So initially we had an analog processor, we have an uh, uh, advanced signal processor which ruled so many decades uh, uh, computational processors. So then we'll come across with an a two ends where we look for the machine learning and an ASIC or AML uh, values at an application end or at an data end and which can be implemented or which will be presented through your ASICs application specification. What we are doing, so we are combining these two because these are the current trends so which will need a computing system and with respect to the olden techniques also that is analog and an advanced signal processing also. So using that, so we are building up a neuromorphic engineering. So which needs to be small, low power and intelligent machines. The major research goal for an neuromorphic systems. So how it neural, neural networks will be driving? So we, we are all saying it here, the ML, yeah, etc. How it will be looked set on that? So we have artificial intelligence, we have a machine learning, we have a neural networks. So we have different combinations can be derived, artificial neural network, conventional, supervised, uh, something else, etc. We have n number of derivabilities over here, these end to looks for all these values. So what it will be looks for that? So we thinking that all these multiple approaches which develops combinationally an artificial intelligence or which drives an intelligence from the real world scenarios with a massive amount of a data. So that itself will be used out with an a total appearance for an a neuromorphic systems. So different generation of neural networks models have been devised to develop understand neuromorphic capabilities to achieve brain-like uh, efficiency. So what it will be looks at on at a hardware end, so which is have a broad spectrum including CMOS, memory resistive or a special devices in combination with CMOS, DSPs, GPUs, FPGAs, accelerators and others. So we are not, as I told, we are not standing with only one uh, technological devices or an implementable devices. We look for all those things. Maybe you can think on quantum to be presented at a neuromorphic device or to be neuromorphic system. You may think the spin to be presented in combination with the quantum. Hello, sir. Sir, am I audible?
my uh, voice is not audible sir it was not audible uh, for a while Hello. Hello, sir. <coughs> sir, uh, now it's audible, sir. No. Hello, sir. Sir, it's not audible, sir. What else is that you want? Hello. Hello, sir. Yeah, is it I'm audible? Ah, uh, yeah. Now it's audible, sir. Problem is it? That's why. Right. Sir, uh, but uh, it's uh, it's very low, sir. Uh, kindly make it uh, <coughs> like a uh, volume up, sir. Full volume only. Okay, let me check my now. Yes, sir. Now it's clear, right? Ah, yeah. That will be looks like this neuromorphic hardware, which will have analog, CMOS, DSP, accelerator, FPGS, including the memory resistive and hybrid device. So our major interest, so we already have all these technologies. You need to combine all these devices with respect to mem resistive solutions. So that's what we look for here. So mem resistive non-linear dynamic attributes. So we look for three categories here. One is an stability, synchronization, and on a periodicities. So maybe you still we have a research problems under this category. And you may look if you are looking for that uh, to solve something else under this, you you may take up some of the problems which is there at a stability, synchronization, and a periodicity at this memory resistor nonlinear time contributes also. So from that, you can build uh, your hardware, neuromorphic hardware, which combines all the, with, with including a combination of all these parameters. So now we are working on this, some of the factors, uh, and we come out with an neuromorphic op, uh, hardware for an autonomous car. Uh, we looks we are looking at to do that also so let's see how much we will successful in the future so the digital cmos solutions so we have an 65 nanometer cmos neuromorphic processor so which is designed for an supervised sorry unsupervised learning techniques with the 1.2k digital neurons and 4.7k latch based synapses so that is your memories with an 1.2k digital neurons to process as an processors 
So we have a CMOS motion sensor, so which is again a neuromorphic, which is biologically motivated. So we call this an a, a false eye, right? So and which will be makes uh, motions at every end, and which will be detected, uh, uh, motivated uh, to do that. So which is found suitable for so, so many applications like in a ro robotic moment. That is false eye, which will given to. The robotic systems. The ASIC with the computer vision accelerators for a sparse coding neural net to learn and extract features from images to video is developed. So this is the major end, which is looks uh, still more appearances and a digital end to be presented. These two are at an uh, another one end, which will be uh, do that. So this is available. So I think. Uh, they are reduced uh, still more. Uh, they're gone with a 45 nanometer CMOS neuromorphic processor, and they increased this digital neuron and uh, synopsis, and they made it presentable uh, on that. So the combination is you have a CMOS circuit, some of the uh, MOSFETs with a MEM register, and presented to your applications. Certain accelerators. Uh, so we are developed the implementation of deep and uh, conventional neural networks. A low power uh, parallel accelerator called as a full parallel processing ultra low power platform. So there is a one low power parallel accelerator which is uh, taken up to do your uh, computer vision task at a kernel level. So that's why it will said to go with a kernel based image processing and vision task which is there. So this is what we are. I am working on, so my DT is looking at on. So reconfigurable computing accelerator for various neural network topologies which has been developed. So, and we have some of the neural morphic accelerator also for mobile platforms, maybe at 5G and 60. So at a 60, we have an, a reconfigurable intelligent surfaces so where we looks more this neuromorphic accelerator to be presented uh, for 6G applications. That's what we are, uh, somebody is uh, Excuse me, sir. Yeah. Uh, uh, no, in the current slide, in the current slide, sir. Uh, uh, this one, uh-huh. Yeah, Can I you thought my voice is, my voice is <laughs> dragged down. Sorry. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, in, yeah. This, uh, in the current slide, this third point, like uh, a yeah, reconfigurable computing accelerator for various Neural network topologies. How is that? Uh, is it developed uh, uh, by? Uh, I mean, writing RTL or a schematic uh, from a schematic level. Sir, that is a two ends. We are uh, making out to be available at an. Uh, uh, one is uh, some of the functions which will be deliverable with an RTL, and some of the functions which is delivered from an analog side, and both will be combined and both will be presented. Let us say. Uh, we have an aria beta processor from an IAC. So that is one reconfigurable accelerator. So where they looks for uh, the neural, the single level neural networks, which is developed from a memory resistive technologies through an analog system. Once the model is created, that will be taken to an a RTL model and, and which is deliverable to do the uh, second and third level uh, neural network parameters. So that's what you, they looks for as an reconfigurable computing accelerators. The lower level, where you are using a memory resistive. Uh, Sir, uh, can you please brief like, uh, uh, this is a bit confusing, like uh, analog model development and then going to the RTL the, uh, uh, translation. Uh, because the moment when we say reconfigurable, it is more uh, sort like on FPGA uh, yeah. kind of thing. Uh, you, are, you may be confusing over there. So okay. recon, uh, yeah, reconfigurable computing not only looks at an uh, uh, FPGA, uh, we are taking up uh, into two different uh, categories. The initial model, which is built on an a analog system, created a model, converted into an a Verilog systems, Verilog uh, models, and then taken up to the modeling of an a, a, a reconfigurable systems, not only with an PLS uh, uh, or with an a gate arrays. So maybe at a lower end, maybe it looks at a programmable logical interfaces uh, 
PLAs. So at that end, we will take up and we will make out it to be available. Majorly, what is your gate arrays will be contained? So and array and an R array, right? Yeah, so, that's that's clear, sir. That part is clear. Yeah. My only confusion is uh, first developing the analog models. You are saying these analog models are converted to the analog. You are saying whereas the complete working uh, uh, working uh, of this analog uh, scenario environment is totally different. The voltage levels, uh, whatever right. that is, and right. digital right. Are, digital are totally different. And coming to the reconfigurable thing. Uh, analog, uh, there is, uh, I mean, in uh, theory only it is there, but in practical, there is no reconfigurable analog devices, uh, according to my uh, so far understanding. Uh, I'm not saying it is a reconfigurable analog devices. It is built for a single neurons, single neural networks through the analog processment. Okay. So we have, let us say, I have a three levels of neural networks. So first level is builded with analog, created a model. That model is appeared for the second level and a third level. The, the first level, second level, and third level is converted into a very log model and made it available to your RTL parameter. From that RTL parameter, it is taken to, to see as an, a reconfigurable parameters. I'm not looking at an FPGA at, end, at that end. I'm looking at an array side, that's it. So that is reconfigurable. So I'm not looking at a uh, FPGA end. Your FPGA is not only the device for reconfigurable, reconfigurable architectures. Something which is uh, configurable furthermore can also be called as a reconfigurable parameters. That's what we're looking at that end, not only with an FPGA. Is it clear, sir? Uh, yes. So as uh, we look at uh, the growth in volumes of data has also propelled investigation into neuromorphic architectures for GPUs. So that is a major end. Uh, uh, now we are uh, thinking on it. Uh, large memory requirement uh, present a challenge. Uh, spiking neural nets, uh, that is SNN, that is the major end which is needs to be thought on. Uh, SNN based, as sir is asked, the FPGA was developed. So the spikal neural network is the crossbar neural networks, which is developed based on that. I think uh, maybe we'll, you contact me furthermore, we'll uh, take up uh, uh, some of the spiking. We are developing the spiking neural networks. Maybe in futures we'll have to go on with the, this FPGA also be uh, there with respect to that also. So they can simulate 4,000 uh, 400k neurons in real time with a speed up of 2.83 times than the GPU than that of the GPUs. So FPGA based encoder and reserver design for neuromorphic processors are developed. So we are thinking on that. So uh, I think uh, uh, Stanford University has developed this and they have made it available for the encoder and reserver, the FPGA based only. So they make it available. So we created a very log model and we, they made it available for that also. This is the one a neuromorphic processor, which is uh, uh, deliverable, uh, which is I am taken from an uh, IAC Aryabhata. Uh, we have n number of inputs here with an peripherals, IN1, IN2, with the ports as a P1, P2, P3, P4, so many things. This is a generalized model which is given. We have a two clock, clock one and a clock two. So we have an, a configurable block, crossbar array. So different configurable modules with an MP array and output circuit. So and a programmable MP selection. So uh, somebody looks for how it can be uh, appearable. Let us say in current crossbar, so I will take an, a single level of array which is available, which is available, which is repeatedly presented to the CMs from that CMs, it will be taken to an, a, a multi-processing array. So from there, we look for to take up that as an, a programmable MP value. So there is a different values which is uh, presented on those uh, factors. So what it is looks here is an, a, to do an, a major block is an, a current crossbar. So how it can be developed. 
so this current crossbar itself will be made it implemented to an a crossbar modules here different crossbar block through the crossbar blocks so what it will be looks it will be looks only through an mm computing systems or mm which stands for computing in and with memories it is an min memory computing architecture we have a memory with an a computing system mm computing is a novel computing paradigm where memory is employed to perform both the task storing and the processing of information on the same physical locations so this substance this paradigm is substantially different than the computational architecture which is implemented to our modern day computers because so there we have memory separate computation uh, is separate so we are implementing both the architecture at a single uh, end so this modern day computer is the separation of task between a memory unit and that of performing in an is under an cpus so these are the some of the features which is goes with an mm computing one is a, a intrinsic parallelism information overhead and a functional polymorphism so we'll take up all those things and we can be uh, taken care so i'm not going in detail to with that so you may notably have understood what is intrinsic parallelism information overhead functional parallelism one so that mem computing is implemented with a device called as an mm resistor what is a mem resistor it is a resistive device works as an a memory element so that's why so we altered our ohms law as an a v is equal to m q i so m of q i where m of q is nothing but a resistivity with the charges so which is continuously tunable between r on to an r off r on to an r off. this is the one um, stability hysteresis graph which will be shows that so where my r on will be looks and where uh, where my r on r off will be looks so with respect to uh, the appearable so and all uh, r on and r off will be deliverable with the charges which is noted with the two constant a and b a will be an on constant and b will be the off constant so so that m can be modeled as a q plus b values so i think uh, in the next two sessions uh, we'll more elaborate on how this mem register works uh, it will be obtained these type of hysteresis graph etc 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 so there is a two parameters which will be looks on on and a half this is the stimulus which will be taken on and a half for the resistive values so the one is at an set side and another is on a reset side set with an a values and reset with an on and a half values so mem resistors are two terminal resistive switching devices which can maintain their internal resistance states depending on the history of applied voltages and currents so depending on how much voltages and currents should be taken care with respect to that the mem resistors which can offer high density integration stand out as a promising candidates for in memory uh, computing so that is where it should be looked at on so researcher are interested in applying mem resistor for anm uh, because uh, there is a one promising uh, device which takes uh, all the factors all the factors of anm to be available majorly on memory effect nano scale size non volatility and passivity values so what is mem resistor it is a non linear component as the name only suggests uh, it's have a two properties uh, as a property of non volatility memory goes with on and a half conditions the on condition will be the high resistance uh low resistance states it can be reversible also as logic one and uh, the half condition can be called as an high resistance state with a logical zero so you can reverse it also depending on your appearances of your device how you are doing logical zero and logical one parameter so memory resistive memories offer the logic operations to be done within the memory that reduce fetching of data uh, time this is the one Uh, mem resistor a presentation model so which is shows uh, how it can be taken care 
so we have a p and an en value positive and a negative value not uh, p doping and en doping p is a positive n is a negative so where the la, uh, the more stable uh, parameters will be looks it says in a negative and more non stable parameter looks for a positive parameter so or indirectly we can say it as an a doped region and an undoped region so there is a total device structure will be says that so one has an the doped region call it as an a doped width and a total device d values so that will be delivers two resistances on resistance or on at a doped region or off at an undoped region the normal symbol how it will be considered so to create that in we have a different models for a member resistor i think today uh, afternoon we will explain about the vt model that is the one model which is considered and maybe we have another model uh, tomorrow i think and a sanford model so one is a biolix model bcm model and a team model these are the more major basic models which will be delivered so the biolix models will be reveals on a optimization strategy uh, which is with respect to bcm and a team and a team is a very good model which is uh, reproduce the dynamics of an mm resistive elements more accurately so than other models the bcm model will be segregative part from biolix to any models so the first two models is very simple for their appearance but the team model as i told maybe looks more complex for the formulation with high error with respect to vi characteristics but effectively very good model than compared to the biolix and the bcm model so nowadays we are developing all the models based on this v team uh, or the sorry team models so these are the some of the model comparison i think in tomorrow i will take up more on uh, these factors to explain how it, different models are there and how it can be comparable so we have a, a linear ion drift model non linear drift model seaman tunneling barrier team v team model we are using a v team model generally we have so many standard models also to deliver that so state variables so the width is between 0 to d doped width so 0 to 1 constant value so we have half state to an on state which is deliverable for an undoped width value so these three will be measured to an uh, sorry these two will be measured through an uh, undoped width and these three will be measured through an uh, doped width so that's why in undoped width we look for on and a half state with respect to the undoped region so in an a doped width we generally looks for majorly on uh, the total size uh, of so that's why we will looks for that so this v team is combines these two models so that is we have w on w off with an a width model so i think you know what is the category of doped region have more doped region we have more on state we have less doped region we have less off state etc 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 so control mechanism current controlled linear drift model voltage controlled current controlled all your uh, undoped models so voltage controlled for v team values that's why it's called as a v team model so i hope not symmetry with respect to origin so only the team model is an asymmetry with respect to origin accuracy for practical uh, mem resistive devices lowest this is sufficient team model that's why it's uh, so this is an v team is an highest one so cement tunneling model is an high one threshold so these two will contain a threshold with respect to current and current value so challenges so we have so you wide applications can be developed which is addressed reliability fabrication uniformity scalability and stability factors you can take up any one of these on a memory register and you can try to so <coughs> instead so approach instead aims towards a more global and a parallelized optimization algorithm achievable through its entirely new computing architecture each data point contributes towards the network update concurrently and in parallel with the others resulting in faster and more robust learning 
as compared to other devices, it has a fast switching strength, resistive fast switching strength. It has a large resistance ratio also, R on to an R off and R off to an R on will be very so that we can have more uh, stability factors to be considered on that. It has a low power read and write, zero, zero standby power, super dense and unscalable. These are the some of the applications which is derived from an, a neuromorphic engineering, which continues to grow at an incredible rate. So applications in vision and robot controls, applications in biomedical and biosignal engineering, applications and perception engineering, etc. So these are the some of the potential neuromorphic applications. So we have a co-processor side, phone, computer, tablet, and HPC, large scale data analysis, commercial scientific intelligence, cyber security and warfare, vehicles, automobiles, and autonomous defense. We have a uh, ground vehicle and uh, underwater vehicles. So smart antenna, smart systems, grid, cities, buildings, and factories, so robotics, commercial, consumer, and industrials, IoT, commercial, consumer, and industrial. So, uh, to take up where uh, you can elaborately more, we put on neuromorphic applications to that and make it available to your, uh, isn't this the one creative, one segregative parameters we listed out to see where my neuromorphic applications will be taken. So you can have some other things we can go and we can deliver about. So we are looking at, uh, automobile and currently so we move on to this also because we may combine this iot this automobile things through this neuromorphic applications also one of my students is also works on this co-pressor criteria that is what i told 6g communication with an ris reconfigurable intelligent services with an neuromorphic system. So we are looking at and to do that. So uh, we have in so many persons are working on uh, neuromorphic uh, computing area. So neuronics, so there is an IASA professor, I think Professor Sandeep is working on that. Pursued is MS on neuromorphic engineering from Western Sydney University, Australia, MS course. and. So neuromorphic computing, so technological university monies. So they have developed their own model and they presented it. C uh, brick for the University Indiana. Your VT model is come across with uh, neuromorphic computing lab, Pennsylvania, so State University. Center for Computational Evolutionary Intelligence, Pratt School of Engineering, Duke University. So Intel is having community and they are working majorly on this neuromorphic system and they are offering the course also. So this neuromorphic engineering course is funded and run by Intel, neuromorphic research community. So the main where the, these two will be collaboratively with the this new neuronics, yes, the Sandeep is from uh, Sydney, Australia. So he was also collaborated with uh, this neuromorphic research community. Fundamentals of neuromorphic computing, say a crash course, Digital University Kerala. This is three week course you can take up if you want. Uh, Digital University Kerala, so this located at Trivandrum. We have n number of bits. And nowadays, Stanford is working. Uh, neuromorphic engineering, uh, so many persons are working on neuromorphic engineering to deliver it. These are the, some of the references which I used. Presentation. Thank you. So if you have any questions, doubts, so. And we are open with the collaborations. Uh, if anybody interested to do something else on Euromark, we are also trying it. We are not saying we already allow, uh, come out with so many solutions for this. If anybody is interested to collaborate with us and to do some more work on Euromark or in memory computations, we are welcome. We can have a collaboration and we can do.
for comrade if you want to if anybody is doing wants to do phd on this so i have opening so far you can approach me it's already deepthi is working on that she is come out with some of the model and another one candidate is also working on in memory computing so if you are looking for that also it's so it's very good so we can have discussion and we can make all thank you thank you sir so participants any questions or any queries i hope uh, there is no more queries okay uh, so let's have a short break tea break and uh, we'll catch up at uh,
Hello, participants. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you can go ahead. Yes. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, welcome back. So now I would like to introduce uh, the next speaker, Mrs. Deepthi MS, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, NIE, Mysore, Research Scholar of uh, Dr. Shashidara H. Sir, her area of interest, Neuromorphic Computing Architectures. Over to you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I will share uh, the screen. Please let me know whether it is uh, visible. Uh, hello, ma'am. Yeah, is the screen visible? Yes, ma'am. It's visible. Yes. Am I audible? Is there any... Uh, uh, no, no, no issues, ma'am. It's no audible. Issues. It's clear. Yes. yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you so much. So, good afternoon, all. Good afternoon, uh, uh, everyone. And uh, first of all, uh, uh, I would like to introduce myself. Uh, so, myself, Deepthi MS, Assistant Professor, Department of PCE, NIE, Mysuru, PhD student of Dr. Shashidhar uh, HR, sir. So, I thank uh, BIT uh, ENC department uh, for giving me this uh, opportunity to deliver uh, the session. So, I welcome all the participants to the session. So, in this uh, session, we will be having a brief introduction uh, regarding one of the widely used Membrister model. So you uh, attended the previous session uh, uh, delivered by Shashidara sir. So he I, he gave a like uh, introduction to like what is a membrister or a just a glance of it, right? So now the thing is the membrister itself is a new device. It's an emerging device. It's a promising candidate for so many applications. So in order to use the membrister in any application, uh, it may be implementing logic circuits or implementing neuromorphic circuits. First of all, we need to know how it is going to behave. So once we know how it is going to behave, we need to model it. So why do we need to model any particular device? So that we can use that model in our simulation circuits and we will get to know how the device is going to behave. So the first step is modeling the membrister. So physical membristors were not available till 2008. In 2008, the first physical uh, uh, device, membrister device was fabricated by HP lab. Till then, there was no physical model available. So how did they uh, utilize this membrister by mathematically modeling it? So currently, there are so many mathematical models that are available and they are very close to the physical models and they behave accurately as though they are the physical devices. So mm -hmm. the first thing is modeling membrister. And one such model which is widely used uh, currently is VTEAM model. So what is this VTEAM model? First of all, let us see the abbreviation of it. It stands for Voltage Threshold Adaptive Membrister Model, right? So before going to this getting into this VTAM model. So first I will like to just in first few slides. So we'll see what is a membrister first. 
So what is actually the meaning of the word memristor? It actually comes from two words, memory, register. It comes from two words, memory, register. So memristor is nothing but it is a two terminal device. It contains two terminal and it is a passive circuit element. It can remember the amount of charge that flows through it in the previous fixed interval of time. So it can remember the current that it has flown through it in the previous interval of time. So it has a capacity to remember the charge, to remember the current or to remember the state of the device, previous state of the device. And hence, remember means it has memory. So it behaves as though it is a resistor, but it has memory. It is not exactly like a resistor, but it is a resistor with memory. And hence, it is called as a memory resistor. And this term was coined as memristor by Professor Leon Chaw in 1971. And why this memristor has suddenly started booming in the field of neuromorphic circuits or uh, whatever it may be like uh, the logic circuit implementation because it, it has been a promising candidate when compared to the traditional CMOS technology, uh, CMOS, NMOS, PMOS. So the memristor is a promising candidate in terms of scalability, in terms of non-volatility, in terms of integrability, and in terms of footprint also. So it has smaller footprint. So because of that, now it is overtaking the current CMOS devices. So anyway, the current CMOS devices cannot be scaled further. The Moore's law has saturated, right? So that's why this memristor has come out as an emerging promising candidate in order to implement the memory which are non-volatile, in order to implement the logic circuits and to implement the neuromorphic circuits. Now, if you see in the figure, I have uh, uh, put the symbol of memristor. It is just a symbol, like we have a symbol of resistor, inductor, capacitor. This is the symbol of uh, memristor. It has two terminals, as I mentioned earlier. So it has terminal P and it has terminal N. So N stands for the negative terminal and P stands for the positive terminal. So we will see that uh, later. Yes. We all know that in circuit theory, so we have three fundamental two terminal passive elements, right? Resistor, capacitor, inductor. So resistor gives the relationship between voltage and current. Capacitor gives the relationship between charge and voltage, inductor gives the relationship between the flux and the current, right? So these are the three fundamental passive circuit elements we use in our circuit theory. Now, the thing is, if we see this relationship, if you see this uh, figure, there is a resistor, capacitor, inductor, resistor, gives relation between V and I, capacitor gives relation between V and Q, inductor gives relation between I and flux. Now, another relationship is missing here. This figure is a 360 degree, if you consider it as a 360 degree figure, it is not like complete, right? So another relationship between charge and the flux is missing. So that missing circuit element, which gives the relationship between the charge and the flux is what is called as memristor. So memristor basically connects charge and flux. So that is the missing circuit element, which was found by Professor Leon Chaw in 1971. And uh, it was published in the Nature Journal and the missing memristor found. So you can find articles, you can find papers about that published at that uh, duration of time. Now, if we go back to this slide where I mentioned uh, the symbol of memristor, correct? Here I mentioned the symbol of memristor. It has two terminals. It is just a symbol. It's like a black box. No details is given. What is the inner construction of it? Nothing is given, right? Now, if you see this figure, so inner detail, like how the physical memristor actually looks like is shown in the figure. So actually, I have stylus here, but it's not working. And I hope whatever I'm explaining, you people are able to correlate it. 
So if you see the figure here, Membrister, uh, it has two materials. One is titanium dioxide, which is doped. That is there at the left-hand side. And to the right-hand side, you can see there is a titanium dioxide that is undoped. Okay, so doped will have lower resistance, undoped will have higher resistance. And at the two ends, you can see there is platinum electrodes. That is for connection purpose. So this is actually how the membrister is like fabricated or how actually it is. Okay, this model was first developed by physical model. I told you earlier, it was first developed by HP Labs in 2008. So they use titanium dioxide doped one side, titanium dioxide undoped on another side. Now the thing is, this titanium dioxide doped, it has oxygen vacancies, right? So whenever the current flows, the doped region is actually going to increase and decrease. So it is something like a membrister is, uh, it is like a serial connection of two resistors. You know, doped region has lower resistance and undoped region has higher resistance. So you can just uh, imagine a membrister has serially connected two resistor, high resistance, low resistance, sorry, to the left side and high resistance. So these are uh, the, uh, those two resistors are serially connected. So based on that, the membrister, either it is going to be higher resistance value, it will have higher resistance value or lower resistance value based on the amount of the current or the amount of the voltage that is applied across the membrister. So this is physical, physical device or the structure of the membrister device. And this physical structure was first represented or provided by, proposed by HP Labs, Stanley Williams, if I remember properly, in 2008. Now, moving on, uh, the a bit of working of Membrister. So, as you know, it is a two-terminal device. It has N-terminal and P-terminal. And one important property of the Membrister, what we are characteristic of the Membrister that we are going to use when we implement it, uh, uh, using it when we implement logic circuit, the one important parameter what we use is mem resistance, that is mem resistance. I told you the mem memory resistor. So its resistance is called as mem resistance. Now, this mem resistance depends upon the amount of the current and the direction of the current through the mem resistor. So let us say that uh, the current flows from N terminal to P terminal. So when the current flows from N terminal to P terminal, the mem resistance, the resistance of the device increases. Here now, if you match with the previous slide, N terminal is this undoped. P terminal is the doped, represents the side of the doped region. So if the current flows from N terminal to P terminal, that is from undoped to doped, the doped, undoped region increases. So the mem resistance increases. And if the current flows through uh, from P terminal to N terminal, then it is through like from uh, doped to undoped. So the doped region increases, the resistance of the membrister is going to decrease. And now one important thing is, let us say you remove the current or the voltage from the membrister. What happens to its resistance? Its resistance will not become zero. It will hold the value of the resistance, hold the value of the previous resistance state. Even though you remove the power, even though you drain the current and the voltage, remove the uh, current and voltage from the membrister, the resistance state of it is going to freeze. So it is able to remember the resistance. It's able to remember the past charge or the current that has flown through the device. So that is why it is called as memory resistor. And this membrister is indicated by capital M and it's a function of a charge and also it is a function of the uh, flux. So that's why it is called as a memory resistor. Now coming to a bit of equations. So I told you mem resistor is characterized by its resistance, right? Its resistance. Now the next thing is, let us make or know the expression for the uh, mem resistance. So before that, I told you that the mem resistor is the, uh, is the one that gives the relationship between the flux and the charge, correct? So can you consider this uh, mem resistance as a function of flux and the charge? Yes. So let us consider G of phi comma Q, okay? So equal to zero. It is a relationship between the uh, flux and the charge and it represents the characteristic of the mem resistor, right? What you can do here is we can model the mem resistor as a charge controlled mem resistor or a flux controlled mem resistor. Like if it is charge controlled, it will become M of Q. 
If it is flux control, it will become M of phi. So you uh, keep a one constant, uh, one has a constant and another has a variable. So we can make it as a single valued function. We can make it as a function of charge or we can make it as a function of flux. Fine. So let us now only concentrate about the charge uh, controlled mem register. Now what will happen to the expression? It will become M of Q. M of Q. So that is mem resistance as a function of charge, keeping that uh, another variable out of the scope. So now this mem resistance is going to relate the voltage and the current through the mem resistor linearly. So V of T, that is the voltage across the mem resistor equal to M of Q into I of T. So it gives a linear relationship between the voltage and the current. And you can also represent this M of Q as D phi by DQ. That is the uh, change in flux by change in uh, like charge. So if you cross multiply, if you take the integral, integral of that rate of change of charge will become the current and integral of that uh, d phi by dt will become voltage. So we'll get back the uh, previous equation. So this is regarding the expression for the mem resistance. So mem resistance, it is a function of the charge and it is the function of the flux. You can make it as a single valued function and the mem resistance is going to give a linear relationship between V and I. The next thing. So we all know that uh, any uh, circuit element you take, uh, we can uh, like a capacitor, inductor or resistor, we can plot uh, the transfer characteristics, right? Uh, let me go to the next slide. So I have the transfer characteristics of the resistor, capacitor, inductor, so we know the transfer characteristics of these things. That is I versus V, IV characteristics. In case of resistance, if you plot I versus V, we will get a straight line. In case of capacitor, we will get a um, uh, curve with uh, like plus 90 degree, right? And in case of inductor, it is like minus 90 degree. So this is how the relationship between uh, the I and V for a resistor, capacitor and inductor. But if you see the relationship uh, between uh, the I and V of means it is in a form of hysteresis curve. It is in a form of uh, hysteresis, pinched hysteresis. So before uh, going uh, further, can anybody just like what basically it represents? We all know. So can anybody just give me that point? If we have this hysteresis curve, basically what it represents? Anyone? So there is an hysteresis curve. The relationship between I and V is like hysteresis. So what it represents? Can you like guess? Okay, fine. So if we plot the current and the voltage of the mem resistor by applying a periodic uh, sinusoidal input or a periodic uh, triangular waveform or a square waveform, so we get a hysteresis curve. And this hysteresis curve, if you see, it is pinched at the origin, right? Means both the current and the voltage will cross the zero or the origin at the same time. And another thing what it tells is, the relationship between the current and the voltage over the range is this linear and after that it's a non-linear kind of relationship, right? And here the phase uh, between I and V is also variable, correct? And uh, uh, in the figure they have shown the hysteresis curve of a mem resistor for three different frequencies, omega 1, omega 2 and omega 3 and it has been given that omega 1 is uh, like less than omega 2, omega 2 is less than omega 3. So means they have plotted the hysteresis uh, curve for three different frequencies in an increasing order of frequency. And if you see there, as the frequency increases, the area under the hysteresis is decreasing, right? So now as frequency goes to infinity, what will happen? It will become like a normal resistor, a straight line, right? So if you apply of periodic sinusoidal 
input to the membrane stir it is going to exhibit a hysteresis curve which basically tells you that there is a memory in the element right the area under the curve yeah th there is a memory in uh, in the device so that is what it basically represents and the area under the hysteresis curve goes on decreasing has to increase the frequency of the input signal and this pinched hysteresis curve is the fingerprint of the memory stir like we all human have fingerprints which are unique no so this hysteresis curve is the like a fingerprint characteristic of memory stir means if you if you take a device you don't know what it is you plot an iv characteristic of it if it gives a pinched hysteresis it's memory stir that's how the leon chow in 1971 he gave the statement if it is pinched curve hysteresis curve then it's a memory stir that is how he coined that particular statement so therefore if you take a memory stir, if you give a periodic sinusoidal input, it is going to, if you plot I versus V, it is going to give you a hysteresis curve and it is dependent on the frequency. As the frequency increases, the area under it is going to decrease and the hysteresis curve shows you that the memory stir has a memory. So it is a non-volatile thing. So this hysteresis curve is also like similar to your behavior of the neurons that are there in our brain. So, the, the, they also have the same characteristics. So, this is regarding the pinched hysteresis curve of the memory stir. So, understanding this is like very much important if we want to go further, if you want to study or do research in memory stir. So, understanding this hysteresis uh, loop is very much important. It plays a very important role. So, the, uh, these are the IV characteristics of ba uh, basic elements. Now, memory stir also become a basic circuit element in addition to resistor, capacitor and inductor. Now, going on to the uh, device model. So, in the previous slide, I told you that uh, the memory stir physically, if we fabricate it, it will be having a doped region in the left side and to the towards the right side, it has an undoped region. And the width of the doped region is represented by W and uh, the entire width of the memory stir is represented by capital D. So, you can apply the voltage across it, you can, uh, the current is going to flow, right? And as the current is going to flow, this W is there, no? That is going to vary. If the current uh, enters from doped to undoped, then it is going to, the W increases, resistance comes down. If the current flows from another direction, then W decreases, resistance increases. So, therefore, this W is is the main important parameter and in the memory stir whenever we model it physically physically sorry mathematically this w is considered as the state variable so we all know whenever the state variable comes into picture there is a memory element so similarly here the memory stir is a memory guy so there is a state variable and that state variable is equal to the width of the doped region anyway it is going to vary with respect to the current or vary with respect to the voltage. So, it is W of T is the state variable and it's the function of the amount of current or the charge that has passed through the device. And once we have the state variable, we will take the derivative of it, right? W dW by dt. So, it is the derivative of the state variable. That is, it will tell you the rate at which the state variable changes. So, that is also important. So, it is going to change with respect to I and V, etc. And if you see the equation here, M of T, uh, so, that uh, M of T is nothing but uh, memory resistance as a function of time. So, as the current passes, uh, the memory resistance also changes. So, it has two terms here if you see. The first term is R on into W of T by D. Second term is R off into 1 minus W of T by D. So, it has two terms here. So, what will happen if W of T is going to be equal, equal to D? means the doped region covers the entire length of the memory stir. Then what happens? The entire memory stir is represented by R on. So, it has a lower resistance state. So, what happens if the W of T uh, is equal to 0? Means the entire doped region is 0. Means the entire length is an undoped region. So, in that case, M of T will become, will have a value of R off. So, if W of T is in between 0 and this D value, 0 and D value, then the memory stance will be a combination of R on and R off. So, this is the equation for the memory stance. So, till this point of time, is there any doubt? We just take a one minute break. I will have water. 
So meanwhile, if any uh, doubt is there, you can ask or post it in the chat box. Yes, thank you, thank you. Just give me a few seconds. Yes, 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 ma'am. Yes, we will continue. So there is a question in the chat box. Uh, I, we will take it up at the end, if it's okay. So next, moving on to the next slide. So the point of our discussion or the session here is to understand the model, right? Uh, modeling of memory store. So because physically, uh, uh, physically, fabricated memory store is not available commercially yet in, in the market. So a lot of research is going on. Instead of like uh, testing it on the board, uh, it is better to model it and first use it in the simulation platform, know how it is going to behave, use it in some logic circuits, or you can use even build neural networks using memory stores. So for that, we need to understand what is what are the models that are available and which model is suitable for our work. Like, for example, if you want to implement the logic circuits, then uh, we need to consider a particular parameter. So there you have to consider a memory store whose R on and R off ratio is very large. Because in the logic circuits, the, it has to retain that Boolean state, right? One or zero, it should not fluctuate. So that R on and R off is two important parameters, right? Memory stores, memory store, two important parameters. The ratio of it should be very large. Means R on, if it is like some, uh, 50 ohms R of it has to be some 100 K. So the ratio has to be very large. So if you want to use the model to build a neural network, then the consideration is different. The memory store should uh, have a good uh, uh, sensitivity. Uh, it should have the de de device variability should be proper. So or else what happens there if you use the memory store in the neural network, the recognition of the character or an image may not be that much accurate. Right? So the gist is based on the application, we have to choose the model. So first of all, how do we start is you uh, 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 survey the models that are available, currently available. So that is what even I did. So before selecting the model, we have to just first check the requirements, whether the model is accurate, whether it is computationally efficient. Uh, whether it is like simple, because model has to be simple. If it is too much complicated, then uh, as a researcher, it will be difficult for us to understand. And also it should be, tuning of it should be proper. It should behave uh, 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 with a stable, uh, in a stable fashion, right? So these are the things which we have to consider before selecting the models. So now currently how many models, n number of models are there? But uh, I have uh, listed only some five models here. We have linear ion drift model, nonlinear ion drift model, simultaneous barrier model, threshold adaptive memory store model, and voltage threshold uh, memory uh, adaptive memory store model. So I will be concentrating only on this voltage uh, threshold adaptive memory store model, and all these other models will be like covered by sir in tomorrow's session. So now coming to the voltage controlled or this voltage threshold adaptive memory star model. Before that, there was a model called as just threshold adaptive memory star model. So if you see this slide, before this voltage uh, memory star model, we have this threshold uh, adaptive memory star model. So what was the basic uh, difference here is the previous model, the threshold was like current. So first of all, I will just tell what is a, why do we require threshold in a memory store device? Because 
you know mem resistor has an important characteristic that is called mem resistance right and that mem resistance either it will have a value r on or it will have a value of r off based on the amount of current that is going to flow now in case of threshold adaptive mem resistor model the threshold was current means the mem resistance used to change only after certain level of current after certain current threshold if you don't have a threshold what is the problem is the value of the mem resistance can change for any value of applied voltage and current so what do we do in the previous model if you consider the first model linear ion drift model it does, didn't have the threshold means for any value of voltage and current the r on and r off used to switch device r on and r off but what they did in case of threshold adaptive mem resistor model is they introduce a threshold means only after this threshold the mem resistance has to change so in case of this fourth model that is uh, threshold adaptive mem resistor model that threshold was current now what is the difference here in vta model the threshold is voltage so in so many applications in logic circuits or neuromorphic uh, circuits we know that handling voltage is easy than handling a current right so therefore this model was derived the earlier model that is taam model it has a current threshold and this model what it has is it is similar to the taam model it is simple accurate uh, computational efficient but it has an voltage threshold only after certain voltage threshold the mem resistor switches the state resistance state so that is the main difference between the taam and vtam model so it is one of the uh, uh, like sufficiently accurate model when compared to the previous or existing models and even now we have so many other model that has come into picture that uh, has been uh, designed by the researchers it is there the stanford model is there im 2 np model is there spice model is there so but vtam is still uh, it is a sufficiently accurate model compared to the existing mem resistor model so and as i told one of the important feature of this uh, vtam model is threshold voltage means the mem resistance is going to change only after certain uh, voltage threshold if the voltage applied voltage is within the threshold then the state remains the same fine that is the characteristics and it is uh, better when compared to the previous model that's we that's why we go for v, uh, vta model instead of tam model okay so now like coming to the some equations Uh, so i will just uh, try to explain it as simple as possible because we know all mathematical equations it will be difficult to understand at uh, the beginning so coming to this vta model as i mentioned in the previous slide i will just go back the mem resistance mem is mem resistor sorry has a state variable right uh, in this case in this slide doped and undoped is a physical device so the state variable is doped region now that is w of t right so here also for vta model we need to have a state variable correct so that state variable let us uh, once again call it as w itself and this vta model let us uh, model it has a voltage control mem resistor device and along with the state variable uh, we also have a derivative of the state variable that will tell uh, uh, what's the rate at which the state variable is changing and here this internal state variable means once again it is the doped region physically it is doped region mathematically it depends on charge and flux right so therefore this uh, derivative of the state variable it is the function of the state variable that is the previous state sorry current state and the applied voltage and once again in vta model the relationship between uh, voltage and current is linear right so here w indicates the internal state variable v and uh, v of t and i of t are the current and the voltage through Uh, or across the mem resistor device and m of uh, w comma v that is mem resistance so currently we have taken m to be a function of the state variable and the voltage so because it's an voltage control device vta model and f of uh, w comma v is a general function so which basically indicates the derivative of the state variable so this is how in the vta model the current and the voltage relationship is established now coming to this uh derivative of internal state variable in vta model how he has defined so i mentioned earlier in this vta model the important characteristic is it has threshold so see here we have v on we have v off here if you just see in the equations we have v on and v off 
So V on indicates uh, one particular threshold. Usually it is going to be negative and V off is going to indicate another threshold level. So if the voltage is between V on and V off, then there is no change in the state variable. Fine. So that is how it is going to work. So therefore, how the uh, derivative of the state variable is modeled in case of VTM is given by this equation. It has three conditions. The first condition is when the applied voltage is like uh, between um, uh, this uh, greater than V off and applied voltage, if it is between V on and V off, what will happen? If it is less than V on, what will happen? So this is how the derivative of the state variable is modeled. So here, one, uh, one important thing that uh, uh, has to be understood is VTAM has thresholds, V on and V off. And here other parameters are there and nowhere we will see the current here, right? Current in the equation. So we have considered it as an voltage control memristor. So DW of T by DT can have these three values. And you can also see some of the constants here, K on, K off, alpha mm -hmm. off, alpha on. So these are all constants. So these are all constants that we will, uh, which is going to once again control the characteristics of memristor. K off is positive, K on is negative. So they are constant, K off is a positive constant, K on is a negative constant. And those details will not go, uh, we will not go into those details because we need so much time to understand those things. So for now, K on, K off, alpha on, alpha off are the constants which is going to decide the behavior of dW of T by dT. And another two functions are there, F off of W, F on of W. Those are called as window functions which will basically tell you how the derivative of the state variable is a function of the state variable w. So derivative of the state variable that is dw of t by dt, how it depends on the current state w. So that is indicated by these two window functions. They are called window functions. They are going to uh, give the dependency of derivative of state variable on the current state variable. So this is the state derivative of the state variable equation. Previously, we saw the voltage and current relationship. Now we need to derive the current uh, equation, right? Because it's an voltage control. So we have an voltage, we have R on and R off, we can compute I of T. So if you see once again here, it is a current voltage relationship of VTA model. And it will tell you how the current is dependent on the voltage. It is an voltage controlled, no? So voltage V of T is on the RH, uh, RHS. And uh, it is a linear relationship. And here R on is the lower resistance of memristor that is possible. R off is the higher resistance of the memristor. And uh, W is the state variable. W on is the uh, limit of the state variable when R equal to R on. And W off is the another limit of the state variable. So W should be within this range, W off and W. So W on and W off are the corresponding limit, limits of the state variable. So just the simple thing is, this is the current equation for the VTAM model. Now we will just uh, see how we can uh, uh, implement this model. I explained these equations, no? So these equations have to be converted into a model so that I can use it in my cadence virtue. So I can uh, give I and V to it and I can see the hysteresis curve. So for that, what we can uh, use it? We can use uh, sub-circuit code also. We can use um, uh, SPICE models also. We can write there in the sub-circuit code. Or we can uh, use Verilog A code uh, and we can write, uh, uh, implement these uh, physical equations. We can convert it into a code and that code we can import and we can uh, generate the model. So why we go for this uh, Verilog A code is a, it's a widely used uh, HBL and it is uh, because of its simplicity and uh, flexibility. So this, uh, we can write the code for this VTA model. So we can import it, we can convert it into a symbol and a model, and then we can simulate it. So they are more uh, like, uh, uh, like more accurate or same amount of accuracy when compared to the SPICE models also, that we use it in LT SPICE or P SPICE. So in same way uh, that they are computationally uh, efficient compared to the macro models. So, uh, I would like to uh, show the Verilog A code for you people. So I will uh, the, the, uh, I will share that particular uh, PDF file. Just give me a second.
Is the code visible? Yes, ma'am. Yes, thank you. So you can see that uh, uh, I couldn't put this in a flow chart. So because of some reasons. So this is the code uh, uh, that is a Verilog A code for various memristor models. Uh, so what I uh, just showed in the slides, you no know, linear ion drift model, non-linear ion drift model, simul tunnel barrier model, and uh, TEA model and VTA model. All these models, their physical equations are written in the Verilog A code, and it is available in this particular single file. And this we, uh, this is like available. So uh, this was developed by a person um, called uh, Sahar uh, Kavinsky from uh, Israel Institute of Technology. So that's uh, that is the guy who uh, developed this uh, TA model and VTA model, and it is available in his research paper as an appendix he has given. It has an open uh, has an open source. So you can just uh, take it from that, and uh, you can just uh, use it for your research purpose. So this code, entire code, I will not be explaining um, because you are all familiar with the Verilog, Verilog A code. So here, if you see, uh, we have defined a mod model here. He has defined a model, module. So that indicates uh, the pins. So I told the Memvisitor is having two terminals, P and N, right? So they have mentioned this uh, P and uh, N here in the module. So I'm not able to highlight also, sorry for that. So it has uh, terminal P comma N comma W position. W position is uh, another terminal. We can add it for a memristor, which will control that uh, state variable. But uh, for now, I have not explored that part. So we can just uh, concentrate on P and N terminal, two terminal. P stands for positive terminal and N stands for the negative pin. And uh, another pin is W position pin, which is an output pin, width pin. So that can be neglected as of now. So that uh, module has been defined. And if you can see here, all the mod models are uh, defined here. Means if you select model equal to zero, linear ion drift model will be selected. If you select one simul tunnel barrier, TAM model, non-linear ion drift model. So for VTA model, you have to give four. So that while simulating, uh, you can select in the CDF parameter, uh, you can select, make it as four. So it will work as a VTA model. So like that, you can change the models uh, that you want to simulate. And also uh, window type, this I didn't uh, 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 touch in this session, why because this out, out of scope or it requires a lot of exploration and all. So that window function can also be selected. So you can explore it more on that. And uh, if you go at the end, so they have given the code for the VTM model. Just a second. So if you see here, VTA model, if model equal to four, then it is going to begin this VTA model. And if it, uh, the voltage uh, that you have applied to the memristor, if it is greater than V of, it will use one equation, correct? I showed that DW of T by DT. Yes, so uh, it is going to implement one equation. And if uh, that voltage is less than V on another one, and if it is like between the things, it is going to implement the DX of, uh, DW of T by DT will be zero. So if it is between V on and V off. So like this, the equations, physical equations, you are converting into the code here and you are just trying to simulate it. So this, uh, you can, uh, this is readily available uh, online. So you can just uh, take it from the website or from the paper also. If, if you want, I will just uh, send that information to the coordinator so they can share with the participants. Yes, sure, uh, sir. I will just uh, send after the afternoon session, simulation session.
So now we will just uh, just see the comparison of com I have just included the comparison chart here. So is the slide visible now? Ah, uh, madam, is the slide yes, visible? Yes, ma'am. It's visible, ma'am. Thank you, thank you. So if you see uh, any general paper, this comparison uh, table is uh, like uh, will be given. So you can see the comparison of all the models here. What's the state variable in that model? What's the control mechanism? Uh, means, for example, in linear ion drift model, it's a current controlled model. TEA model, it's a current controlled model. Whereas VTA model is an voltage controlled model. And also if IV pot, that also the comparison is given. So in linear ion drift model, the hysteresis is, will not be there. It will be a, just a linear curve. And small amount of hysteresis area will be there. So it is symmetrical with respect to origin. Whereas VTM, it is a bit asymmetrical with respect to the origin. Accuracy, you can see that uh, from the accuracy point of view, the VTM model have the highest accuracy uh, when compared to the other. Whereas TAM has a sufficient accuracy. Even simultaneous barrier is also a very good candidate for implementing logic circuits. And the threshold, if you see threshold point of view, the linear ion drift model, nonlinear, simultaneous barrier model, they don't have the threshold. Whereas from TAM model, the threshold was introduced. TAM has the current threshold, VTM has the voltage threshold. So since voltage is easier to control, uh, uh, VTAM model is preferred. So now coming to uh, uh, using of membristor for the logic circuits. So why the membristor are now coming as an emerging uh, promising candidates to implement the logic circuits? Because we already have traditional CMOS technology to implement the gates, AND gate, OR gate, basic gates, and even all kinds of adder sequential circuits. Everything we have implemented already using CMOS technology. But now why membristor? Why in logical circuits? So if you uh, implement logical circuit using memristor, memristor can be fabricated between the two layers of the design, PCB design. Means it will not take much of the silicon dye area uh, has uh, your NMOS or PMOS. So it is going to save the dye area. So it has a smaller footprint when compared to the CMOS. So you can use the memristor in the logic circuits. Along with CMOS and NMOS, we can use it. Then it becomes an hybrid memristor CMOS memristor and CMOS uh, circuits. So basically why the memristors are used in logic circuits is they occupy smaller footprints. They, uh, uh, so we can save the dye area. You can even combine the memristor with the CMOS and you can build the logic circuits. And one more thing is the memristors, uh, why they are used in logic circuits is if you consider uh, the crossbar array uh, that uh, shown in the right side of the figure, if you see there, it is basically a crossbar array. It's an array. Uh, each intersection of the vertical and the horizontal line indicates the storage point, a memory point, right? So in this point, we can use the memristor. So we can uh, use the memristor for storage as well as we can use the memristor for computation. Say, for example, two cells, you can use it for implementation of AND gate or OR gate. Another two cells, you can use it for storage. So basically what is happening, you are doing computation and the storage at the same location. So you're basically saving the time of transferring the data from the ALU to the memory from the or from the memory to the ALU. So we are saving that time. So that kind of architecture, you know, it is called von Neumann architecture. So we can go beyond the von Neumann architecture if we use the memristor. So basically the memristor, you can do the computation and you can do the storage at the same location. So there is no that uh, movement of data back and forth from the uh, memory and the processor. So that is called non von Neumann architecture. And these non von Neumann architectures are very much used in neural network application. Why? Because you know the current AA and ML applications, they have very much huge amount of data. And transferring that data between the GPU and that memory is a very huge task. It is costly job. So we can go for a non von Neumann architecture where we can do the computation and the storage at the same point. So this is why the memristor devices are used in the in-memory computation and as well as in implementing logic circuits. And the next thing is when we use the memristor uh, for implementing uh, logic gates, uh, how the logic states are represented? For example, if you go for the CMOS technology, there the logic state is represented by voltage. Logic 1, some voltage, 5 volts, or logic 0, 0 volts, right? Whereas in, if you use the memristor, the logic is represented by resistance. 
So if the resistance of membrister is high, like R, R sorry. Somebody, uh, I think they have unmuted uh, their mic. Yes, uh, you can carry on, ma'am. We'll, we'll just mute again. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you. So in case of membrister, uh, uh, the logic is uh, represented in terms of resistance. So high resistance of the membristance that is indicated by R of indicates logic zero. Low resistance of the membristance that is R on indicates logic one. For example, if you see the figure below, if you have set the membristance high resistance as 300K, it uh, indicates logic zero. And if uh, you have set the low resistance of membristance as 1K, then that is represented as logic one. So lower resistance, if the membrister has switched to a lower resistance, then it is uh, logic one. If it has switched to higher resistance, then it is uh, something as logic zero. So, so in the next two slides, I will just uh, explain. Uh, actually, I uh, wanted to use my stylus to in indicate the direction of flow of current. Uh, just one question. Can I just continue this in the afternoon session along with the demonstration? Is that possible? Yes, uh, sure. No. Fine, fine. Yes. Then I will just take up one question that was asked by one of the participants. So yes, yes. I will answer that and we can wind it up, ma'am. Afternoon, I will explain these two slides and I will show the simulation part. Okay, ma'am. Yes, yes. Thank you. Uh, this question was by, I think, Ajay, sir. Uh, if possible, can you mention why hysteresis occur? Ah, sir. Yes, I will just go back to that slide. So, if you see here, the membrister, it has uh, the IV characteristics is like uh, a pinched hysteresis curve. It is like not a straight line, like in case of resistance, correct? Means the phase between the current and the voltage is varying constantly. Means it is not the phase itself also is not fixed. If the phase between I and V was like 90 degree, then it would have been like a capacitor or an inductor IV curve, right? But here, the current and the voltage, there is a lag between these two. Because uh, the field, whatever you have applied there, I told you apply, uh, the membrister is controlled by the flux and uh, the charge, right? So when we remove the field and uh, when we apply the field, this current and the voltage naturally is because of those oxygen vacancies, there is a delay in I and V and it is going to vary as the width of the uh, doped region is going to vary. So even though you have the apply current and voltage at the same time, there is a phase difference between these two and that phase difference keep on varying depending upon the current uh, with respect to the time. So that's why there is a hysteresis curve basically. So that is because of physical model, HP model, whatever that was developed, no? so that acted in that particular fashion. So that indicated the hysteresis curve. So if any mathematical model you take, you have to write the equation such that it is going to give a hysteresis curve when you apply a periodic sinusoidal or any periodic square wave. Hope it is clear, sir. Yes, yes. Yes, that is because of the retention property. Current and the voltage, the phase varies. So that is experimentally proven and there is a paper based on uh, the hysteresis curve. How the hysteresis curve is like originated. So there is a research paper related to that. In depth, if you want the explanation, sir, I will just share the paper with you later. Because lot of solid state electronics and all comes into picture there. So I can, I will uh, share it with you, sir. Yes. Okay, madam. Uh, can we like wind up now? 
there is no questions uh, there's no more question in the chat box okay let's break up for hello mm -hmm. Hello, am I audible? Uh, yes, madam, you are audible. Yeah. Good afternoon, all. Uh, I welcome everybody to the afternoon session. So I welcome uh, Deepthi MS, ma'am, and I'll hand over to her. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you, madam. Thank you so much. Is the slide visible? Yes, yes, it's visible, ma'am. Thank you.
just i will keep it in this uh, slide uh, i won't put it into the slide show because my stylus is not working in that mode so few slides i will just explain, explain uh, as it is uh, so now uh, in this uh, afternoon session uh, we will uh, just go through uh, the procedure of creating uh, vtem uh, memristor model in uh, cadence uh, virtuoso software so it is uh, the creation of the model is uh, similar to of like creation of any other uh, uh, device model in uh, the cadence so in this case what we are going to do is we are going to create the model uh, by importing the verilog a code so the verilog a code uh, that i already uh, uh, that i uh, displayed in the previous session uh, so we can uh, just uh, uh, import that download that and put it into a g edit or any other text editor copy it so first we need to import uh, the verilog a code so we have to keep it uh, ready and any modification in the code uh, uh, if the research uh, uh, people has to do then they can do the modification of the parameters or the uh, they can even change uh, the code according to their requirement and once the uh, Verilog A code is like ready, uh, then we are going to build uh, the Memristor uh, symbol, like uh, any other uh, symbol creation, because the Memristor model is not available in the Cadence Virtuoso software. So we will build the symbol. And once we have the symbol, uh, we will uh, take that symbol in a, a schematic, and we are going to build the circuit, uh, whichever circuit we want to simulate it using the Memristor, we will uh, build the circuit. So once we build the circuit, according to the requirement of the circuit, we have to change the parameters of the memristors. We have to tune it. So one important uh, challenging uh, uh, task here is tuning uh, the memristor uh, parameters. So that is uh, the challenging uh, aspect. So the uh, tuning the parameters means V on, V off, uh, then uh, K on, K off, alpha on, alpha off. So these parameters, we need to tune it in order to get the proper uh, simulation uh, output so once the once the simulation uh, uh, modification of the parameters are done so we can uh, take that particular memristor model and uh, create the circuit tree according to the uh, specification and uh, then we can just convert the once the simulation is uh, validated we can go for the physical design so this is the uh, same usual process we are going to follow here so now uh, what i have uh, planned for this session is so I will share uh, one more uh, window. So I have uh, connected to the uh, Red Hat system here uh, to demonstrate it in Cadence. So through any disk, uh, I'm accessing it. So first, I want to make sure whether that is that I can share. So kindly acknowledge. So I'm now sharing it. So is the screen visible that any desk that yes ma'am it is visible so if you people have access uh, to the cadence in your uh, uh, college uh, if you are right now so you can uh, just parallelly do along with me or you can note down the uh, steps and you can do, uh, try it out later so first we need to create the memristor uh, uh, model and we have to simulate it and we have to uh, just get the IV characteristic of that. That is the hysteresis loop. So that will be the objective. So first, uh, um, uh, I will create uh, the folder. So I will just uh, give some name to the folder. So FDP, I will give. So once the folder is uh, created, so we need to import the Verilog A code. So in another folder, I have the Verilog uh, .va code here in the document, text document. So this I will uh, copy and I will put it in the folder that I have created just now. So I will just copy this text file, which contains the Verilog A code for the VTA model. I will copy it to, to the new folder that I created. So I will paste it here. So I will make sure it is there in the same folder working directory so once this is done so let us just uh, invoke the virtuoso tool so i will just open the terminal so if you want i will just increase the font size yes so i will just call the c shell and then i will uh, source 
and I will just invoke the virtual so tool. So we got the log window here, CDS dot log window. So this would be the first uh, initial step. So import the Verilog A code. So it is available uh, uh, online. So you can download it and put it into your text document and uh, paste it in your uh, current working directory. So now go to the, click on the file. So now what we have to do is, I need to create a memristor symbol, right? VTA model symbol. So first let us create our own library. So we'll just go to the file new and click to this library and uh, give the library name. So I will give mem. So memristor uh, give any uh, name, relevant name to that library. And we don't need any technology process information file to be attached here. So I will select uh, the option has do not need any process information under the technology file sub window. So give the library name and then select the technology file. Uh, that technology file, you make it as uh, do not need process information. So you just check it and uh, make sure that it is in the working directory path and then click OK. So once you click OK in your log file, you can see that the library is created. The library is being created successfully. So once the library is created, so what we will do now is we will start with the process of creating the memristor symbol from the very log A code. So once again, go to file, go to new. Here you just click on cell view. So you click on cell view. And now we have to create this particular uh, cell view under the library that we created, right? So we defined. So just click the library that you created. Under that, you just create the cell, cell uh, symbol. So cell name, you give it as the symbol name. So you can give VT, uh, VT model, right? VTAM model. So you just give uh, VT model or something like that, the name, whichever is uh, comfortable for you. And then in the view, you just keep it as schematic only. And in the type, you have to select Verilog A. So here, so many options are there. So here you select, just a second. Yes, you make it as type very log A. And uh, you can observe that as soon as you change the type to very log A, once again, this view change to Verilog A, so you make it a schematic because uh, we want to create a symbol and that uh, symbol has to be created in a schematic layout, right? So you make it a schematic and it will open with the text editor because uh, your, your Verilog A code, you have to just uh, paste it in the text editor, right? So what you do is you select the library that you created, cell, you give it as VT model because we want to create the symbol for the VTAM memristor model, view, you select it as schematic. Then type, you make it as Verilog A, means we are converting a Verilog A code into the symbol, right? So type, you make it as uh, Verilog A, and then just click OK. So now you can see that uh, a window pops up where it is an editor. So already uh, some uh, fundamental uh, uh, lines of the Verilog A code is, is being included. So now what we have to do is you go to the uh, folder. So where you have this uh, Verilog A code, you just open it. You copy this uh, code, the entire code, to this, this uh, editor window. So here you replace the entire thing. You copy it. So you can see here, I have copied the code into this text editor. So you can see that uh, the code, the keywords are all uh, highlighted. So once you have imported the Verilog A code, you have to check and save to find that uh, it is going to check whether there is any error in the code. So check and save. So when you check and save, if there is no error in the code. It is going to ask, do you want to create the symbol? The sim it tells that the symbol does not exist. So yes, right, we, have, we want to create the symbol. So you give yes. 
So when you give S, it is going to give symbol generation options where in the code we have mentioned what should be the left pin, what should be the right pin, what should be the top pin, what should be the bottom pin. Correct? So here you can see that library name is mem, the cell name you have given is VT model, and the view thing is I want to view it as a symbol now, right? So pin specification is also indicated. So the left pin in the code we have mentioned it as P, that is positive terminal of the mem register. And the right pins are pin number N, that is, uh, sorry, pin N. N means that is the negative terminal. And another uh, uh, terminal, what they have mentioned in the code is W position. That is the pin output pin, to, uh, which indicates the width that you can use it further for the modification of the state variable. But that pin we are not going to use in our simulation. We'll just use the pin P and pin N here. So now you just, if there is no other uh, modification is there, you just click OK. So once you click OK here, you can see uh, the symbol is created. So here you can uh, just edit the part name. You can make it as VT model, Membrister model. And also instance name also you can change here. You can change the instance name. So make it as some same thing you can give or you just give it as mem and mem vt. So once uh, the symbol has been edited, you can once again check and save, give check and save here. So you can see the messages log uh, in the log window. So if you check here, it will give the message. The symbol is saved with no errors. So this you can check it in the log window. So membrister ETM symbol has been saved and it has been cross-checked with no errors. Right? So symbol we have successfully created from the very log A code. So now uh, you can just close this symbol. So cell view has been modified. Do you want to save your changes? Yes, you give click yes. So this text editor window also, you can just close it. So I will just once again tell what and all we did till now. So we created a library, our own library, without any technology file connection to it. And then we imported the Verilog A code and we created the VTAM model, uh, VTAM model symbol. So now we have to use symbol generation has been done. Now we have to use this symbol in the circuit and let us check whether that uh, model is working properly or not. So for that, we need to now create a test circuit. Test circuit means how to test whether the, that uh, memristor is behaving properly or not. What could be the possible way of testing whether that memristor is working? Because I cannot directly go to the AND gate or OR gate. I cannot check right whether that uh, is functioning properly or not. So from reference to the previous session, can anybody tell like how to check whether that memristor is working properly? What could be the test circuit, possible test circuit? How can I check whether it is a memristor? Can anybody kindly just give me the answer? How can we just check whether it is a memristor? What could be the possible test circuit? What input I should give? Should we measure the current, madam? Should we measure the current? Yes, 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 madam. You it, can uh, it's even uh, uh, voltage source. Hello. Yes, yes, ma'am. Your voice is breaking. Hello. Ah, yes. Now it is clear, ma'am. Please tell. Voltage Hello. source, voltage. which is in the micro volts region, and measure the current. Yes, ma'am. And yes, it then is. Uh, plot R as a given expression, ex expression yes, yes, yes. for uh, whatever we have used for modeling. Yes, 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 yes. Correct, ma'am. Thank you. So what, yes, thank you, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you for responding. Uh, so, what is the possible ways? Has madam told? Uh, uh, so, we can build a test circuit. So, in the previous uh, session, in one of the slide, uh, we just saw that if it is pinched, it is memristor, right? We saw that uh, statement. So, how, like, I can uh, just check that uh, it's a memristor is, uh, like, uh, you just build a circuit, you give us periodic sinusoidal uh, source to it, and uh, just uh, plot the IV curve, 
So if it is you are getting a pinched curve, so you can say that the membrister it is operating as a membrister. The symbol whatever you have created now it is operating as a membrister, and the code is uh, uh, successfully it is uh, mapped the physical equations into the membrister model behavior. So for that, what we need to do is we have to just uh, create a schematic. So you go to file, you click on new and uh, you go to the cell view here. So here under the same library, what you have created. Uh, now you just create a VTM model test circuit. So you can just give circuit underscore circuit, change the name to the circuit and the view. It should be schematic. So because I want to build the test circuit in the schematic uh, layout. And uh, open with the application, you can open it with uh, schematic L or you can open it with schematic Excel. So once it is done, you click OK. So you will get a schematic uh, text editor. So you will get an editor here, schematic editor. So now what we have to do is we have to build a test circuit, right? So we'll put a membrister, we will connect a sinusoidal uh, source and uh, we will rig up the circuit, we will uh, simulate it and we will see what output we are going to get. So for that, I need to first uh, add the membrister symbol here, what we create, uh, created just now. For that, uh, you just uh, will add the instance. So I will just click I here. So I will uh, create uh, add instance here. So from uh, which library we need to select this? Uh, we created this mem library, you know. From there only we will just uh, put, uh, select that instance. And what was the cell name uh, we gave? VT model. And the view is symbol, right? So you just hide this and you place it here. So you can see here. So I just uh, created, added the instance. ETAM membrister model instance. So now we will add a sinusoidal uh, source. So from the li analog library, so you just select uh, V source. So here, what uh, frequency we will give is, we will give it in the megahertz range. So I will give it as uh, the frequency of the sinusoidal input. I will give it as 50 megahertz. And the amplitude, the peak value, I will just give it as one volt. So here I've selected source type as sign. So since here V sign is not working in the cadenced uh, tool, uh, so I have used selected V source and I have selected the source type to be sinusoidal type. And I have given the frequency 50 megahertz and the amplitude uh, peak I have given it as one volt. So you just uh, select that and place it in the schematic layout editor. So now what we will do is we will just uh, place the ground pin and complete the circuit. So select the ground pin from analog library, place it on the schematic layout editor. Now select uh, the wire option, connect the P terminal to the, sorry, So connect the P-terminal to the positive uh, terminal of the source and end terminal. If there is a lag, kindly cooperate. So connect it to the ground. End terminal, you connect it to the ground and uh, you just complete the circuit, rest of the circuit. Yes. So circuit is complete. So now the next thing is properly tuning the parameters of the membrister. Means I told in VTA model, there are several parameters, right? Which is going to control the derivative of the state variable. Like for example, there are several constants, K on, K off, alpha on, alpha off, V on, V off. So these uh, constants and the variables, uh, they have to be selected properly. They have to be tuned properly in order to get the proper hysteresis output. So now you just go to the click on the properties of the membrister symbol. Here in the CDF parameter of U, you select uh, schematic. So 
so it will display all the parameters related to the VTAM memristor model that was mentioned in the Verilog E code. So you can see here whatever it was written in the code, same thing. The values have come and it has been uh, in the places for the, of the corresponding parameters. So here the model uh, number it has become zero. So let us make it as four because in the Verilog A code, if you check for VTAM, the model uh, number that we have assigned is four. And window type, let us check without uh, the window function for VTAM. So no need of uh, selecting the window function. The next important parameter is DT. So DT is basically going to uh, decide at what rate the state variable is going to change. DT, that is the portion of the time, the fraction of the time. So usually, uh, how to select this DT value? That is important. If you don't properly select the DT value, there is a chances that the simulation uh, output will not may not be proper. So DT is basically the uh, uh, fraction of time with respect to what, uh, with respect to which the differentiation of the state variable will be done. So how to select this on which it is dependent on? So it is dependent on the input source frequency. So now do you remember what was the frequency we gave? 50 megahertz. So you have to select this DT at least two to three orders less than the input source frequency. So I will repeat. So you need to select the DT has two to three orders lower than the input source frequency. So here it is in megahertz, right? So 10 power minus 6 and 50 is there. So I will just give it as 10 to the power of some minus 10. So 2 to 3 orders less. So I will give it as 1e minus that is 10 power minus 10. Then initial state. What is this initial state? It is initial state of the state variable w. So w is a state variable and it will be limited between two values 0 and 1. It can take 0, it can take 1, it can take 0 0.5, 0 0.7. So that is what is the range of W. So initially what should be its value? Here in the code we have mentioned it as 0 0.5. We can also take it as 0. For our hysteresis simulation, let us just take it as 0. The next thing is R of. That is what should be the mem resistance of resistance. Means whenever uh, the mem resistor goes to the high resistance state, it will have this value. Now whatever you mentioned it here in this box, it is going to have that value. So instead of 200k, uh, let us make it as 1000, 1k. So because we are not uh, simulating any logic gates, no. so we will give it a low R on R off ratios. So I will give it as 1k and this R on, R on means what will be the low resistance state of the mem resistor. So whenever it is uh, logic uh, one, what will be its uh, resistance? So that is decided by this value. So let us make it as 50. Just make sure that the ratio of R on and R off is proper. That's it. So next is D. D is a physical parameter of the mem resistor, right? If you remember capital D, it is actual physical length of the mem resistor device, D, capital D. So here they have given it as e, uh, 3 into 10 to the power of minus 9. And uh, mu V, mu V is uh, drift uh, uh, velocity, mu V. So that is drift velocity. And these parameters, W multiplied, P coefficients, J, P window noise. So these things, uh, they are all uh, some uh, physical uh, related parameters. So we'll not worry much about it. Threshold voltage. So here you see here. So here uh, in VTA model, I told the, there is going to be a threshold voltage, but that is not the, the this threshold voltage. So this is a single threshold voltage. So, but we were using uh, two threshold voltage. So make this as zero. So uh, give the value zero for this. And another two important thing, what you need to observe is this K on and K off. K on and K off. Because if you remember the equation of DW by DT, so we had this K on and K off, no? So I told uh, K off is a positive number. K on is a negative number, right? So this is some values are there. So I will just modify it. K on, I will make it as uh, um, minus 10. And K off, I will make it as some 5E like minus four or something like that. And alpha on alpha off, uh, you can keep it as three and uh, this you can make it as one. So we'll just change it. Instead of keeping both alpha on and alpha off, same values will make it different. And V on uh, here, uh, they have given uh, minus 1.78. So you can just give it as some uh, minus 0.2. So I will just reduce it. And this I will make it as V off, I will make it as 0 0.02. So these are the values 
that uh, we need to modify alpha beta x on x off the c g all these parameters are like important in simultaneous barrier model so for vtm model just concentrate on the parameters what i just uh, explained now that is v on v off k on k off alpha on alpha off and uh, this model number dt r on and r off so these are the parameters that you can modify these are not the final values these are like based on some trial and error method so if you want you can just vary and just check how it is going to affect the shape of the hysteresis curve so that uh, you can just uh, think how to apply it for the logic circuits in future so after doing the modification you just click okay so once you click okay the parameters will be updated if you want you can cross check it just once again go to the properties check the parameters so it's updated yes so you can just apply and click okay so once you have finished with the test circuit so this is the test circuit right so you have the uh, vtam uh, model that you have connected to a sinusoidal periodic source you have built a test circuit so now what we have to do it we have to simulate it we have to check what is the current uh, uh, current flowing through it what's the voltage of it and what's the iv curve of it right so before that you check and save okay so you are it is going to give you one warning so we'll see what is that warning yes so there was no error but error uh, found but there is one warning found in the circuit schematic what is that warning the w position is floating output means we have not connected the w position to any of the circuit part so it has been left open it is floating so that is the warning that is uh, been uh, indicated in the cds.log window so that warning you can just ignore it because we have left it open and we will not be using that terminal so you can just uh, uh, neglect it and you can continue with the simulation so now we have checked that there is no errors now what i have to do is i have to launch the analog design environment simulation platform so i am going to launch it i have i will give the simulation timing simulation parameters and i will select what terminals uh, values uh, signals to be plotted right so for that you go to the launch option so you select uh, analog design environment excel so let us create a new uh, environment so just click on okay here so now you can see that it will ask do you want to create an analog design environment view for the library mem for this circuit so just click on okay so here it will just welcome you to the analog design environment excel so here now what we will do is we will have to select the uh, simulation uh, parameters right so just go to the tests here so let us define the test uh, things so just click here so it will just ask whether it is for vtm model underscore circuit you want to simulate it yeah you yeah, just click okay so now what we have to do we have to just uh, simulate the transient behavior no we are giving input sinusoidal and you are uh, just want to observe the voltage that's it so sinusoidal waveform so it is transient analysis so choose the type of analysis let it be transient stop time you have to mention here so what we will uh, we have to give it uh, give the stop time here because you have uh, uh, selected um, uh, the input to source frequency as 50 megahertz right so mega means 10 power 9 so here we will just give it some 200 nano okay so let that be the simulation uh, span and the next thing is like uh, options here it will uh, ask you the time step parameters so this is very much important so you remember what value we gave for dt uh, that is for uh, the fraction of time with respect to what we need to uh, differentiate the state variable that is 1 e minus 10 that is 10 power minus 10 right so i will get the same time step parameter here 1 e minus 10 and 1 e minus 10 maximum step and step will give the same values click ok this also you click ok so this is regarding selection of uh, analysis type whether you need to do the transient analysis dc analysis ac analysis for our this thing uh, it is transient analysis for now so next the outputs so which outputs i need to plot which signals inputs and outputs i need to plot for that let us select it from the design right so i need to 
plot the current through the memory stir. So that is flowing through this node P, right? So you'd select that node. So just once again, go back to ADEL, just check whether that is selected, yes. Now once again, let us select, I need to plot the voltage that is across the memory stir. So I will select that input uh, source line. So go to the ADEL. So I have selected both, right? So I have selected the current to be plotted, the node through which that current flows, the current to be plotted and the voltage across the memory stir. So now run the simulation. Yes. So carefully observe here, uh, the red waveform is your uh, current waveform, the current through the memory stir and the green colored waveform is the input voltage that we have given periodic input voltage that's voltage across the memory stir, right? So this is the current plot and this is the voltage plot. So now I have a question here. So is there any phase difference between the two waveforms? There is, ma'am. Yes, there is. Yes, ma'am. And you can see that it is variable. So how we can make sure that uh, there is a phase difference and it is variable whether uh, it gives an hysteresis curve or not. We need to plot it. Plot I versus V, right? So you can also split these waveforms. Here, you can split it, you can check. So there is a bit of distortion in the current waveform. That is, there is a phase difference between I and V. So there is no problem issue in that. So you go to axis, you select Y versus Y. So let us plot I versus Y. So you select uh, the... Okay. Uh, it seems uh, there is only phase shift in the positive cycle. In the negative cycle, there is no phase shift. Ah, yes, yes, yes. But uh, there is a slight difference. If I combine the waveform, ma'am, I will just once again show you. Negative side also a bit of. Yes, there is a slight difference is there. Slight difference in the phase is there. So just let us just check the hysteresis curve. So you'll be able to see it properly. And negative side, ma'am, as you told, it is a smaller portion, correct. So select a trace, one second. Ah, select voltage as the x-axis, right? So I will just net to and click OK. Yes. One second. Yes. So you can see there is a hysteresis area. So that is a relationship between I and V. So they are represented by an hysteresis curve. And you can see at zero, at zero, both I and V are meeting at the same point. They are having the same zero crossings at the origin. So they don't have any phase difference there. And after that, uh, they have that uh, variable phase difference. And you can see as the voltage increases, current also increases here, right? So this, this portion. So that is like a resistance on state. And after some uh, switching, uh, it is going to fall down. It is going to decrease. And it is going to stop at some point. So it is going to form a hysteresis curve. Now, if you want to check whether it changes for different frequencies, as I mentioned earlier, the area of the hysteresis um, curve is going to uh, decrease means as the frequency increases, the area under the hysteresis curve is going to uh, decrease. So this is regarding uh, the uh, simulation of the IV characteristics of VTAM model. Similarly, if you check the other memristor models, the IV characteristics are different. So here, if you see, ma'am, uh, if you see, uh, there is a linear relationship between I and V over certain range. After that, the state changes means between V on and V off, the state, memory stance state remains at one particular state. So after their V on and V off, the state is going to switch, correct? So if you consider other memory stir models like linear ion drift model, their IV characteristics is different. So their behavior is different. The I and V relationship is different because the physical equations what uh, uh, is used to define those models are different. So this is like for 
understanding whether the membristor is giving a pinched hysteresis curve. So there is an area in the uh, IV curve means, hysteresis curve means there is an area, there is a retention and that indicates there is a memory. So this is actually how if you simulate the neurons in our brain. So it is also going to show some kind of uh, relationship between the current and the voltage. That's why these memristors, since they have proven that their hysteresis, so they are having hysteresis curve, they are having memory, they have been used to replace the neurons and the synapses. Even we can build the neuron circuits, even we can build the synapse circuits using the memristor. And then using those neurons and synapse, we can build the neural networks. So that can be used for recognition of an image, recognition of any other characters. So instead of a uh, CMOS-based neural networks, you can go for a memristor-based neural networks. So if you use memristor uh, in neural networks, so the scalability will increase and number of components, the density of the neural network will increase. So that is the advantage. So even if you remove the power source, it is going to remember the previous state, resistance state, or you can say the amount of current that has flown in the previous interval of time. So you can change some uh, uh, values and you can check the simulation. So I will change some parameters here. We will see how it is going to work. So instead of 50 megahertz, let us make it as some 80 megahertz. So we'll uh, increase the input source frequency. So once again, check for errors, check and save. So once again, we will launch the simulation. You can select an existing, if you have saved the state, you can select the existing ADEL also. So I will just uh, create the new one. Go to test. You give the simulation parameters. Choose the type of simulation, transient. Give the stop time. The duration over which the simulation has to be run. Then the step value. Then select the signals to be plotted. Select this current and select the voltage. And you can once again run it and check the simulation. We'll just see whether there has been any modification in the hysteresis area. So there is a little bit decrease in the area under the hysteresis. So if you increase even further uh, the frequency, you can uh, just check that the area in the hysteresis will come down and it will become a straight line, like uh, the IV characteristic of a resistor. Okay, so the system that I was using, uh, the cadence system, it actually got uh, hanged. So, uh, so I need another three minutes for that to restart again. So, any doubt is there? You can please ask. It's not the system is not working. So it is. It has got hanged. So is this slide visible? A 
Um, is the slide visible? Okay, thank you. So uh, in this slide, I have just consolidated the steps that uh, you need to follow in order to create the memory stir symbol and uh, to mm -hmm. check the uh, hysteresis uh, curve of it. So the same memory stir model, uh, you can uh, use it uh, uh, to build the logic circuits like uh, AND gate or gate, you can go up to the MUX ALU. So you can uh, just uh, use the same symbol created in order to implement, even you can implement the crossbar array neural networks so regarding one question is there in the chat box, uh, do we have any open source alternatives? Yes, sir, we have an open source alternative uh, that is LT Spice. You can install uh, the student version. One minute. Hello ma'am, am I audible? There was some network issue from my side. Am I audible? Yes ma'am, you are audible. Yes ma'am, you are audible. Okay, regarding the question in the chat box, do we have any open source uh, alternative? Yes sir, so we have LT Spice. So you can uh, just import the uh, MATLAB code. So in that uh, software LT Spice, you can just uh, uh, have a, uh, a collaboration with the MATLAB thing and you can import the code there and you can build the subcircuit model there. And the same way you can uh, simulate uh, the uh, uh, models, even you can uh, simulate crossbar arrays, uh, OR gate, AND gate. So it is possible in LT Spice, but it is a limited version. I think after uh, if your circuit has like more than 10 memristors, uh, maybe the simulation output uh, will not be proper. So there is some issues in that LT spice. So I also encountered. So that's why I switched to the uh, Cadence software, Virtuoso software. So I hope uh, I answered your question. So in this slide, you can just uh, check out the steps. So if detailed step is, steps are required, then I will uh, uh, send the document to you people. Then uh, uh, another uh, two gate operations I will explain and uh, I will uh, explain the simulations in the next session. Is that okay, ma'am? Because here uh, the system is like uh, giving problem. So I will make sure that it is proper tomorrow. So I will show the simulations tomorrow. Yes, ma'am. Okay. Uh, because it is, was running from morning, so there is some problem with that. I will just show okay. the simulations to get simulations. Thank you. Okay, okay. So after uh, this uh, AND gate and OR gate operations, I think, ma'am, uh, we can just uh, wind up uh, because I have uh, uh, these two gates uh, to explain and uh, we will have the simulations tomorrow. Yes. So let us uh, just uh, see uh, AND gate operation here. So as I told in the morning session, if you use memristors, the logic is resistance, right? Logic is its resistance. 
in case of cmos the logic is voltage right in case of this membristance based uh, circuits the logic is resistance so if the membristor uh, logic is uh, uh, sorry resistance is high then it is like logic zero if the membristance resistance is like low then it is logic one so that is the concept so based on this you can build the logic gates and you can just uh, check the outputs of it so in the next slide i have uh, uh, put the membristor based and gate so it is just simply based on the voltage divider concept that's it so there are also other logics based on what you can implement the gates this is just a simple logic there are other concepts using which the gates can be implemented so that you can refer the papers uh, it is available uh, uh, online uh, so there is uh, i will just mention uh, two techniques other techniques that are uh, used to uh, build the logic gate one is magic technique membristor aided logic and another one is imply logic so these are the two techniques using which you can build the logic gates so there the operation is different so here whatever i am explaining now the operation is uh, based on simple voltage divider rule concept so you have two membristors here you know that this is the n terminal this is the p terminal so in order to form an and gate what we have done is we have shorted the n terminal here and we have taken the output and what about the inputs where we will give the uh, input a and input b so you will give it to the p terminal of the membristor a and b so if you short the n terminals and if you give the inputs to the p terminals it is nothing but it is an and gate it is going to work as an and gate so let us see how we are these uh, four uh, logic combinations so you have the truth table here of the and gate let us just check for the first two sorry first uh, input combination so what happens if uh, both inputs are uh, zero means let us say this is grounded this is also grounded zero and zero so both are at the same potential let us consider the output is like uh, floating so what is going to happen there is no current that is going to flow right there is no current is going to flow so the output will also have the same logic level as that of the input so output is going to be zero so if the membristance has any previous resistance state uh, then it will uh, remain as it is but since there is no current flow so there won't be any voltage at the output so same voltage will appear here so for the input combination 0 and 0 so the output is 0 so the behavior is same thing as that of the basic uh, cmos and gate right next we will go to the next uh, last uh, input combination that is 1 and 1 let us say a is 1 b is also 1 so in this case also the situation is the same so both the inputs are at the same voltage level let us say it is connected to vdd 5 volts it is connected to vdd 5 volts so no current is going to flow and the same uh, voltage is going to appear at the output so for one and one combination the output we are going to get it as one so therefore it is same as that of the and operation now let us check for the other two combinations that is important the explanation of these two are important let us uh, consider for the combination one and zero so a is one connected to vdd b is connected to zero so now what is going to happen there is a potential difference right and there is a closed circuit here so what happens the current is going to flow like this and it is going to flow and it is going to go to the ground so here the current in the first membristance if you see m1 it is flowing from p to n terminal so when in a membristor when the current flows from p terminal to n terminal the resistance decreases right so therefore this will go to the r on state and similarly if you consider the another membristor m2 the current is flowing from terminal n to terminal p so it flows from n to p means it is flowing from undoped region to doped region so therefore its resistance increases so it will go to the r off state now what actually happened is your uh, upper membristor switch to r on lower membristor switch to r off you want to find out what's the output voltage so you can just use simply you can use the voltage divider concept so v out is equal to vcc let us say this is vcc so it is r on divided by r on and r off 
and you know that this r of is very much greater than sorry here i have done a mistake here it should be r on this should be r on so you know r of is very much greater than r on for example let us say this r of is 100k and this is 1k so we can neglect r on in front of this r of right so this will become vcc into r on divided by r of and since r of is very large so this quantity will be small and this v out will be almost a negligible value and you can uh, take it as zero zero volts so the output will be at logic zero so this is the output for the combination 1 and 0 so it is going to behave as an and gate so this is actually the same way you can just uh, check it for the combination 0 and 1 so i will just explain that also so for the combination 0 and 1 so this is r on only for 0 and 1 combination let us say this is grounded this is connected to the vdd so current will flow like this right yes so now in M2, it is flowing from P to N. So the resistance will decrease, switch to R on. Where M1, it is flowing from N to P. So this will go to the R off state. So now if you once again apply the voltage uh, divider formula, you will get R on divided by R on plus R off, right? So you are going to get the same thing. And uh, it is, once again, you can neglect this and it will be equal to zero negligible voltage because the denominator is very large r on is r, r off is very large when compared to r on so this circuit whatever you uh, created the memristor symbol now you can use the same memristor symbol you can build this circuit and connect the sources here for a and b some pulse source you connect and you can run it and you can check that uh, it will get the uh, you will get the and operation for all the logic combinations it is possible. So we can do that. So that simulation, I will uh, show it uh, tomorrow. So next is OR gate operation. For OR gate, what we have to do is, we will give the inputs uh, to the uh, N terminal. And uh, for the uh, output, we will short the P terminals and we will take it as the output. So in the same fashion for 0, 0 combination, so you can uh, just uh, check uh, what is going to happen and for one and one combination you can check the same voltage is going to get carried out. So like this in a similar fashion the explanation could be given and this is we make it as R on. So this is going to behave as a OR gate. So using this OR gate and AND gate and you can also build the NOT gate that also I will show in the simulation part. So you can build the NOT gate. So in order to build the NOT gate, we will take a memristor P and N. So this we will connect it to VDD. Here we will connect uh, NMOS. Here we will give the input A and here we will take the output. So this we are going to uh, operate it as a memristor based NOT gate, but you can also call it as a hybrid NOT gate. Why? Because you are using mem, rister has a pull up resistance and plus you are also using a NMOS. So you, like this you can build the NOT gate also. So once you have the basic gates, AND gate, OR gate and NOT gate, so you can build the XOR gate, then you can build the half adder, then from that you can build the full adder. So once the adders are done, you can also build the design, the multiplexers, so comparators. So once all these units are ready, you can design a 1-bit ALU, 4-bit ALU, 8-bit ALU. So that is completely based on the memristors. So one advantage of uh, using the memristor for logic gate implementation is the number of uh, 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 the device count of NMOS and PMOS reduces. So the area occupied by one NMOS is very large when compared to the area occupied by the mem one memristor. So in the area of one NMOS, we can accommodate six to seven memristors. So you can see uh, how the, uh, the die area is uh, uh, reduced. So effectively, we can use the silicon uh, area. So we can uh, improve the density of the circuit. Also, the power consumption decreases drastically. So that is also one uh, important uh, advantage. So any doubt is there? You can please ask.
So I had actually planned to give the AND uh, OR gate uh, demonstration also now, but uh, there is some issue. So I, I will definitely resolve it by tomorrow. Ma'am, power dissipation area analysis. Uh, you can do it once you build the app. Excuse me, madam. Yes, yes, please. Uh, Madam, you actually the move out of any desk and then simulate and then uh, share the snapshot if you can. Snapshot? Oh, you want snapshot? Yeah, if you have done something, you can put it in the PPT where you are showing. Ah, uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Actually, I of thought of simulating. Reasons. I have uh, that. Uh... Oh, because tools yes. we do have and uh, okay. if you share the code and uh, we will do it. Yes, ma'am, sure. Give me one uh, minute, ma'am. I will just... Uh, share it with you. Yes. Yes. Thank you. Welcome, ma'am. Welcome. Is the PDF visible to all the, all the participants? Yes, ma'am, it's visible. Ah, yes, yes. So, ma'am, uh, as you asked, uh, so we have simulated AND gate, OR gate, and we have also done uh, adder circuits. And also we have done up to Brentkung adder, Koge stone adder using memory stars. So this is one of the report is there. I don't have the uh, thing with me. It is there in the desktop, uh, I have saved it there. So AND gate uh, symbol we need to create and uh, we need to simulate it. So al always it is better instead of uh, like uh, uh, using memristors and uh, simulating the AND gate, what you can do is you can convert it into a AND gate symbol itself so that it can be used in the other uh, adder circuits or wherever it is required. So based on that, uh, the simulation was done and uh, the output waveform was, uh, the dot CSV was extracted from the cadence and in the MATLAB, uh, we plotted the waveforms. So it is uh, showing that for one and one, uh, we will get uh, uh, logic one. And uh, for zero, zero, and one, zero, and zero, one, it is zero. For only for one and one, we are getting uh, one. So it is operating as an AND gate. And you can see that there are, in the V out, there are some glitches. So this is actually important. Like uh, uh, if you use CMOS, these glitches will not be there. So if you use Memristor, these glitches are there. And to uh, uh, overcome these glitches, glitches, few analysis has to be done, few buffers has to be added. So why? Because if you use these memristors, so there may be possibilities that convergence issues may come into picture and uh, drop of the voltages will be there from one stage to another stage if you use lot of uh, memristors. So in that case, we need to add amplifiers and buffers in between. So those are the problems that you can face. So similarly, the OR gate is like uh, simulated. So shorting P, P, uh, P terminal, uh, you will take the output and to the end terminals, you will get the input and uh, uh, you are going to get the output for the combinations. So that simulation, uh, uh, that glitches and all, uh, I will just uh, show it in the tomorrow session.
so you can just but can we it. do uh, just a question can we do the spice and at least download it uh, here the which one ma'am sorry Yes, ma'am. You can you can use, ma'am. For uh, that, we need to write. That uh, means save the file and take it to any other tool. Ah, uh, that I have not explored, ma'am. But uh, in one research paper, I saw that uh, option is available. I have not explored yet. Okay. Okay. Yes. yes. That at least you can take it and you can try it out, ma'am. I am also actually planning to try that. I have still I have not explored, but few research papers are available which tells that it is possible to port from this to that. Netlist. I mean, in that case, only the spice has to be compatible, not anything. Mm, that is the issue, ma'am, because I once tried with LT spice. There, we have to write the another subcircuit code, so that was a problem. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, any other questions? So, still uh, more exploration has to be done this done in this area. So if any questions, it is, will be also helpful for me to explore in that direction. Regarding power dissipation, uh, power analysis can be done. So that uh, exploration has to be done yet. And uh, uh, research works have done the power analysis, area analysis, timing analysis, and comparison has been made. So power uh, dissipation has been uh, reduced uh, in, in the research works what have uh, surveyed till now but uh, yet to be implemented practically from our side. I will share the materials with the coordinators so participants can have and try it uh, whenever you are free. If there is no questions. I think ma'am, this is, that's it from my side for today. So since system is not proper, uh, I asked Madam told I can Madam, simulate you and show put the, Excuse me. You put the very log A code in the chat box itself. So we'll copy it. Oh, that link, ma'am, has a link. It is not available. Paper link, I will just put it, ma'am. Paper uh, oh, that I need no, to access. No, no, no. The text file, the text file, what you had uh, copied, the same ah. thing if you put it in the chat. Here, uh, how can I put that uh, text file? In the chat, in the chat. I can put it a uh, file also. Not file, uh, the text only. Select all and copy and paste it here. Oh, but that is like uh, very, uh, four to five, six pages are there, ma'am. Is that oh, okay? Oh, okay. No. <laughs> no, no, I will just, uh, if the coordinator gives me the mail ID, ma'am, I will just mail it to them. You can collect. Ma no, okay, fine. Okay, okay. Yes, we'll be sharing it later on, ma'am. We'll be sharing it later on, ma'am. Sure, ma'am. Sure, sure. I will share with you, ma'am. You can share with the participants. Yeah, yeah, sure, ma'am. So that's it, ma'am. Can we just uh, wind up, ma'am? Um, if, if it is like fine, uh, we can just uh, wind it up. Two and six is the connection, Nodi. Illi vargo auru kitar ta idrishto tanka. And idhi yaudu yaud marti raiga. Idhu design ele. Simulation no ardham bharta sari idhu. Ma'am, can you please uh, mute yourself? Hello. Yes, I'm sorry. Huh. Ma'am, uh, can you just, uh, that's it from my yes, side. Yeah. Any questions I can ah, take? Yes. Them. Okay, I'll just summarize it, ma'am. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much. Okay. On behalf of Department of uh, Electronics and Communication, BIT, I extend my most sincere thanks to our eminent speaker, uh, Mrs. Deepti MS. I want to express my heartfelt gratitude for encouraging the participant to understand uh, the memristors, that is the modeling of memristors, and uh, her excellent coverage on the topic, that is voltage threshold adaptive memristor model, comparison of previous model with the uh, voltage threshold adaptive memristor model, so logic circuits with the uh, memristor devices, 
like AND gate operation and OR gate operation. So thank you so much, ma'am. Welcome, ma'am. We are most welcome. Thank you all, ma'am. Thank you. Okay. So now uh, we are going to wind up the session. So we'll continue tomorrow.